Game day on the Georgia Tech campus, which means the place to be is Yellow Jacket Alley. The Tech marching band there to entertain, get you in a football mood. And if that alone doesn't do it, well, maybe the sight of the Ramblin' Wreck itself will do the trick. And if that's not enough to get you ready for some ball, Buzz is putting his stinger on the line as we get set for Maryland and Georgia Tech. Today in Atlanta, the 10th meeting between the Atlantic Coast Conference rivals, the Maryland Terrapins, and the Yellow Jackets of Georgia Tech from Bobby Dodd Stadium at Grant Field in Atlanta. No team in college football has a better winning percentage in bowls than Georgia Tech. This year, they are one win short of their first postseason trip since 1991. And we welcome you to Atlanta. They've run along with Gary Reasons. They are one win shy. If they get anything like the play they've gotten over the last two weeks, the best two-game stretch ever by a Georgia Tech quarterback from Joe Hamilton, you like their chances today. Really, Joe Hamilton's having a spectacular last part of the season. The last two games, he's done very well, completing over 60% of his passes, and I tell you, over 600 yards. Moving the ball around, he's got Derek Stiegel, who's healthy. He's back now. He's had 223 yards against Virginia a couple weeks ago, and Harvey Middleton, the all-time leading receiver here at Georgia Tech as well. Maryland, the first year under Ron Vanderlinden, 2-8, and eight, not the record they hoped for, but they didn't necessarily expect the entire program for Vanderlinden to be in place the first year. No, but he's going to rely on some freshmen today. He's got some key freshmen to key positions on offense. He's got Lamont Jordan as a starting tailback. He's leading the team in rushing, and on the outside, he's got Moses Cruz, who's leading the team in receptions and getting his first start today. Omar Cheeseborough has four touchdowns, so he's got four. He's actually starting five freshmen and playing seven or so here today for this team. Let's welcome the third member of our crew who will be on the sidelines for us today at Georgia Tech, Christy Deer. All right, you guys, as you well know, it's man, did it rain here in Atlanta last night. We had about three or four inches of rain in about an hour span. But guess what? This field is in excellent condition. Three years ago when George O'Leary got here, he got rid of the Astros. They were put in some grass. I'm telling you what, he's glad he has it today. The field is in great shape. Georgia Tech plays well here at home. They have 394 wins at Grand Field, which is more than anybody else in college football. Back upstairs. All right, Christy, George O'Leary, Ron Vander Linden squaring off as head coaches for the first time. We'll have the kickoff from Maryland and Georgia Tech coming up. No one controls their own destiny in the Pac-10 as far as the Rose Bowl is concerned, so it's going to be a battle today. USC takes on UCLA and their great running back, Skip Hicks. Meanwhile, Washington State... They need the victory to get to the Rose Bowl. They'll face Washington, Ryan Leaf, and Brock Hewitt, a couple of great quarterbacks. We, of course, will keep you up to date throughout the afternoon. Right now, let's take it back out to your game. And the entry onto Grant Field at Bobby Dodd Stadium of the Ramblin' Wreck of Georgia Tech. The Yellow Jackets set to play host to the Maryland Terrapins. Final regular season game for the Terps. Georgia Tech with one more left. That will be back here next week against Georgia. It is just the 10th meeting. They've never lost to Maryland here. In the last two meetings, in fact, they have not allowed so much as a touchdown. A shutout in one. They allowed only a field goal in the other one. George Leary, George O'Leary in his third year as the head man at 16 and 18 for the Jackets, who come in at 5 and 4, 4 and 3 in the ACC. Had it going in midseason, a four-game winning streak, and at halftime of the Florida State game. They were in good shape down to 7 to nothing. The defense collapses in the second half against the Seminoles, and they really haven't recovered since that game. They almost blew what was a 23-point lead at one point last week to Duke, 7 for just a three-point win. Georgia Tech has won the toss. They elect to defer. Dave Frakes set to kick it off for the Jackets. And back deep, Lewis Sanders and Cliff Crosby. Sanders right there in the middle for Maryland. Breaks a senior out of Rockford, Illinois, has this underway with a good high deep kick, which Sanders will not return from two yards back. And so Maryland, 2-8 and eight on the year, 1-6 and six in the ACC, is set to go to work. Final game of the career of Brian Cummings, 60% passer, nine touchdowns, a career high for Brian this year out of East Chester, New York. They do have the lowest rated offense 
in the ACC, but boy, the Georgia Tech coaches don't pin much of that on the shoulders of Brian Cummings. They are very high on his leadership abilities and his arm. Comes in within easy striking range of 4,000 career yards, and after a play fake, he has to step up under pressure, and wide open is his tight end, Mike Hull. And a quick 11 yards for the Terps. Kofi Smith, the tackle. Look at the Chili starting lineups. As the Maryland backfield will include Lamont Jordan, the true freshman from Forestville, Maryland, and Buddy Rogers, his final game as a senior. Moses Cruz, Omar Cheeseboro, redshirt freshman, Hull, who just got the first catch at up front. Gilliam, Messina, Thomas, Ward, and Fugel. High formation on the first down carry for Jordan. And he may lose one as the final linebacker, Keith Brooking, their all-time leading tackler, is there. The Georgia Tech defense up front, Hugh Shepard Witherspoon gets the start at the nose today, and Tarplin at the other end. The linebackers, the strength of the defense, Justin Robertson along with Ron Rogers and Keith Brooking, maybe the best pair in the ACC, Caldwell, Myers, Tillman, and Smith. And they have five new starters since the second half debacle against Duke. They did not waste time shuffling what had been a very shaky deck defensively for the Yellow Jackets. Jordan with the screen, and you see his power as he just about gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Travaris Tillman with the first contact on Lamont Jordan. The book on Jordan is he's a good runner after the catch, and he's caught a lot of balls this year. He has 19 on the season coming into this ball game. And, you know, the first two plays here, two the first two of the three plays, you can see what Maryland's going to attempt to do, and that's move the ball around the field from short possession pass type, high perceptions, and, and try to get things going effectively. You don't expect for Vanderlyn to try to throw the ball way down the field and try to make things in a hurry. That's just not the way he's going to run his offense. So on third and 11, shotgun and three wides for Cummings. And has to step up again, too tall for Jason Hatala. Another one of the true freshmen getting some time today for the Terps. Had to hurry because of Felipe Claybrooks, who brought the pressure for Tech. So the first play works pretty well, and then things break down a bit for Maryland, and they will have to kick it away. Russell Edwards has come on, averaging just under 38 yards per punt, junior out of Alexandria, Virginia. And Harvey Middleton is the deep man for Georgia Tech. Edwards hangs that one right into the sun, and Middleton with a nice return up near the 40-yard line. So we'll see Georgia Tech with good field position after a 14-yard return by Middleton of a 44-yard punt. They take the offensive when we come back. Joe Hamilton is just a sophomore, and he probably today will slide into the number five all-time spot in passing yards in Georgia Tech history at 64% for the year on target to set a new single-season percentage record for the Georgia Tech offense, which takes over from their 40. Stegall won in motion, and the pitch to Charles Wiley, who comes around the right side for about eight. Chile's starting lineup for Georgia Tech. Hamilton in the backfield with Wiley and Ed Wilder, a true freshman from Washington, Georgia. Middleton, their all-time leading receiver. Stegall finally back after major injury problems his entire career, and Mike Lilly is the tight end. Guys up front, Salaj, Burks, Page, Key, and Carmen gets the start. George O'Leary says the largest human being he had ever seen when he signed him at 6'8", 357 pounds. Room up the middle briefly for Wiley and just enough for the first down into Maryland territory. The Maryland defense, eighth rated in the ACC. Simmons, Hicks, Calcet, and Hicks. Johnny and Eric on the defensive line. Ogle, Barton, and Irwin Light are the linebackers. Barton, their leading tackler, 12 and a half per game. Secondary Crosby, a converted running back. Sanders, Baker, and a converted wide receiver, Troy Davidson. So on the first and 10, Hamilton with the eye. And Charlie Rogers has come at a tailback. Wiley moving up to fullback. 
as Hamilton will keep on the option, coughs it up, and it's a Maryland recovery at the 42-yard line. Hamilton, as he's hit on the option, unable to hang on in the recovery by Eric Hicks for Maryland. Looked like Eric Barton got in there and got his arm around the football and knocked it out, and Hicks, Johnny, on the spot for the recovery. Hamilton will do a little bit of option here with Georgia Tech. They don't do it a lot, but uh, every now and then they'll try to run that play to get things moving to the outside. As you see here, Hamilton moves inside, and, and there's Barton. Got his hand inside, picks on the recovery. Barton it was who caused it. O'Leary says he thinks of Hamilton as their featured running back. They really don't have uh, a dominator, game breaker in the backfield. So Hamilton likely will carry it a bit. Here's a flea flicker for Cummings. And it doesn't fool anybody, incomplete, with a couple of defenders down there to shadow Moses Cruz. Good job by Kobe Smith that time, the cornerback getting back, having depth on the play. Maryland did have the week off, and you know, they may put a few of these little different wrinkles in to try to loosen up the Georgia Tech defense. A little toss back from the fullback. Cummings has a strong arm, and he's able to get plenty of time, great protection for him to throw the football. But Kobe Smith was right there, as you see here, closing on the play. Little bump there, incidental though, and good play there by Smith. Smith back there with Myers with the long, entertaining incompletion, second and ten. Got to figure there's a lot more where that came from in their game plan today. Shotgun draw for Jordan. Threw a couple of ankle tackles and a Maryland first down to the 46-yard line for Jordan. 12 yards. He runs a lot bigger than 213. Well, he sure does. Ron Vanderlyn, we talked to him before the ball game, and we, he told us that you know, he has the ability to make guys miss. He's got the speed. You know, he was a track star in high school. He says he's a legitimate track guy, and he was weighing about 220 right now and run the football very well for the Terrapins. Ron Vanderlinden refers to him as the guy we can build the building around. By far the most uh, prized recruit of his first recruiting season at Maryland. And their all-time leading freshman rusher after a 126-yard first against North Carolina State their last game. This time, though, he's trapped for a loss of a couple by Keith Brooking, the fine linebacker, their all-time leading tackler. Two and eight. They were two and three after the back-to-back -back wins over Temple and Duke. West Virginia started what is now a five-game losing streak. Vanderlyn has said, though, it's like a one-game season for them. They're starting next year today and hopefully can build on you know, what's going on for them. They're seniors. They spoke this week and how, how important it was for them to do well this last game. And I think that's the kind of approach that this Maryland team is going to take today. Vander Linden, longtime assistant under Bill McCartney at Colorado, then with Gary Barnett at Northwestern. Quarterback draw and the quick linebacking four for Tech. Limits coming to maybe one. Derek Shepard also up there to help out on the contact. That's just good contained rush by Georgia Tech. If you watch these guys, they're going to stay in their areas where they're supposed to be rushing up the field. Nobody really gets out of their lane. Then the protection breaks down. Georgia Tech closes in on the runner. So with that loss, third and 14. Derek Shepard, senior from Dayton, Ohio, helping to foil the running attempt by coming. Little like Hamilton, not as fast, but he is willing to run. They have to here. As Fugel out in front, gets the block and is finally run down from behind by Felipe Claybrooks, who is starting and getting a lot of time we expect today because uh, he has some enthusiasm that that defense has lacked of late. If you watch a play like that, will continue to spark it. Actually, Clay Rooks was the guy who missed him in the backfield, dives at him, and falls down. He gets up and hustles all the way down the field to make the play. That's a good hustle by an outside linebacker, getting up off the ground and making the play downfield. So when you're fourth and two at the 38, you got to think about going for it, and they will. Marching to the wind kind of day for Vanderlinden. And they have a big hole waiting for Jordan, who is inside the 30 of Georgia Tech. Power blocking all the way into the secondary for Jordan as Travaris Tillman, the strong safety, is there. Maryland floods the field with their receivers, brings Timmons, the fullback, up to the line of scrimmage, and they run the slant counter play here to the open side. Do a nice job at the play, at the point of attack. You can see the guard and tackle coming right at you there. 
Lamont George just gets in behind that big tackle, straight up the field, gets his shoulder square to the line of scrimmage, and he's a pretty good load at 220 pounds. So the Terps march continues and movement from uh, either side of the defensive front for Georgia Tech. Ben Thomas absolutely snapped it. He'll be meant to point <laughs> offside's defense. Robin Wood, our referee. That is an alert play there by the center. It's kind of a given. If they go on a hard count, they're going to snap the ball if somebody comes into the neutral zone. And Shepard, I think, popped in there in front of uh, the center. So he did snap the ball. Good job of uh, execution there by you know, a simple play. It's a hard count on offense. So that turns into a first and five. Cruz coming out wide right. The leading receiver. Omar Cheesebro is wide on the left side and room on the sweep for Jordan. But quickly coming up to close out any room he might have on the corner with Jerry Caldwell. Look at Keith Brookings here, number 35. He's our outside linebacker. He's going to be on the left side of the screen. Watch him here as he takes on the fullback, Tillman, as he comes out to the outside, plays outside leverage, does a good job. Then he has corner support coming up. That's a good job by the linebacker. He doesn't make the tackle, but he strings it out so his help can get there. Keith Brooking, who was known as Dick Butkus in his hometown of Sonoya, Georgia. Jack Lambert fan growing up. You can see a little bit of, of both of those guys in this style. Actually, his nickname is Dick. Anytime he goes <laughs> home, he turns his head, and that's what they call him back there in Sonoya. Jordan tries to pop this one outside, and Ron Rogers, Brooking's partner at the inside backer for Georgia Tech. They have the second leading tackler and eighth in uh, the career totals for all-time stops for Georgia Tech. Ron Rogers out of Dublin, Georgia. Yeah, Ron Rogers and Keith Brooking, a dynamic duo inside his linebacker. These guys make plays all the time, and one complements the other. I think Rogers is more of a plug-it-up-in-there type of a linebacker, a guy who can step up and make the hard hit, and where Brookings, he has 4-5 speed, can make plays all over the football field, and, and we'll see him do that quite a bit today, I'm sure. So another third down for the Terps. They need to get to the 20. Short drop for Cummings, and incomplete. Intended for Buddy Rogers. Rogers won't drop a whole lot. He's their second leading receiver. He's got 21 for the year, but it's now fourth and four. Yeah, I think that ball caught him by, caught him by surprise, caught him on his back hip. Just turned his head around. The ball was there very quickly. Cummings delivered it right on target. Well, last time they had a fourth down. They won for it successfully, but this time Vander Linden will send on Ryan Kopka. A true freshman from Hollywood, Florida. And it's a fake and wide open. Making the catch inbound inside the five was Buddy Rogers. So on the fake, the holder, Trey Evans, throws 20 yards. Almost overthrows Buddy Rogers, who after that drop of an easy pass makes a sensational catch. Well, this is a big, big no-no by the Georgia Tech defense and the kick return team because what they're supposed to do is count from the inside out to find. Watch here to the right side of your screen as the, the holder's going to pick it up and toss to the outside. No one has accounted for the guys going to the sideline. They didn't count inside, so he's out there by himself, Buddy Wood. Does a nice job of holding on to the football. It was a high throw, but a great play by the Maryland special team. So first and goal for Maryland from the four. It is Jordan. Touchdown. Third rushing touchdown of the year for Lamont Jordan and uh, the Gambles just keep coming from Maryland and it is cashed in on the touchdown for Lamont Jordan. This is just straight ahead. You see the guard pulling around here. He's going to get inside the block on Brooking. Lamont Jordan squares his shoulders at the goal line. Good lean forward. Does a nice job of getting in. Watch you coming right at you. You see your guard come across. Kick out Brookings as I said. Lamont Jordan's got enough power to get it through there. Now Copter's going to kick it for good. And it's 7-0. So all set up by Trey Evans' first ever pass attempt. The completion on the fourth down fake makes seven to nothing possible for Maryland midway in the first quarter. ABC Sports presentation of college football. Brought to you by 
Chrysler engineered to be great cars. Burger King, where you get your monies, for your burgers worth, by National Car Rental, so what are you waiting for? Let's go. And by Pacific Life. Strength, knowledge, experience. Use the power of the Pacific. Seven to nothing from Maryland. Kafka was out earlier on the drive to attempt what we thought would be a field goal. Turned into uh, the key play on Trey Evans, the sophomore from Austin, Texas, pass to Buddy Rogers. So seven to nothing. At, at some point, Gary, should we look for anything up to and including the Statue of Liberty in Maryland <laughs> today, that kind of day? Well, there's a few more things you know, that Banner Lynn can take out, but uh, that's a pretty good start here. Looper by Kopka. Charlie Rogers with the return of the 32. And let's send you to New York and John Saunders. Charlie Rogers taking. Dave, time for a Burger King update. USC against UCLA. Bruins already up by a touchdown when John Fox hooks up with R.J. Sauer. 80 yards down the sideline for the touchdown. Their first play from scrimmage, and they come back to tie it. 7-7. Dave, back to you. All right, John, Georgia Tech ready to take over. Trailing next to last game, needing one win for postseason play. And up against the team that has uh, nothing to lose, whatever. Rodgers takes the swing pass, and Charlie eluding a gang of black jerseys, finally up and out at the 39 of the turf, knocked out by Cliff Crosby. Dave, you mentioned earlier, they're going to use a lot of running backs back here for Georgia Tech. Charlie Rogers is just the guy who's the quickest. He's kind of a scat back back there. You see him as he catches the ball, he's going to move to the left of your screen and watch him. Hamilton just flips it out there to him, and then here it is. It's all Charlie Rogers. Number three, he's going to wiggle a little bit, got the speed to get to the outside. He's probably the quickest of all the tailbacks that they have on the line, uh, on their roster. So they'll, char they'll change it up with Wiley and Rogers and Phillip Rogers. Going to get a plethora of running backs at, uh, back there for Georgia Tech. Took that one 28 yards. Nice way to recover from the early surprise provided by the Turks. Now Charlie Rogers on the ground and turn back after a four-yard pickup to the 35. Troy Davidson came up from the corner for the first contact. Pretty important to get something going on the very first play because they had to be back on their heels. They sure were. I mean, it kind of caught them by surprise. It probably didn't expect Maryland to come out and do the kind of trickery things that they did early on. But they did George O'Leary's team. They wanted to settle down. They want to bring this team up to the line of scrimmage, run their offense. Don't get caught up in trying to be a big catch-up game like, uh, like you might expect. Joe Hamilton's a competent quarterback, and he's going to keep things calm down. Just went out in motion. Quarterback draw, Hamilton. With one man who had an angle to catch him, and it was Kendall Ogle who finally ran him out, but 17 yards, and you see why O'Leary considers Joe Hamilton their featured running back. Well, when he has the feet that he has, Joe Hamilton can run about a 4 5 40. He's very quick coming out. It's just a quarterback draw, a simple play. Watch the linemen set up their blocks, and it's the job of Hamilton to read the blocks. He does a nice job here off the outside. Taking the block from Stiegel to the outside and moving on down the field. Good job by Hamilton of picking up the blocks. Watch Stiegel as he turns and turns in. Good job there. And Hamilton reads it, runs to the outside for a big game. So we've seen Charlie Rogers catch it, run it, and throw a key block. Not a whole lot else you'll ask a running back to do. Charles Wiley on the pitch. And no gain. Eric Barton coming up from the middle backer. Well, tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 12 Central and Pacific, is the finals of the Chase Championship. The top 16 players in women's tennis have come to New York this week to battle for their tours title and $3 million. And then at 4 Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific, the final round of the ITT LPGA Tour Championship. The top 30 money winners, including Annika Sorensam, will compete. Second and 10, and the option pitch for Charlie Rogers. Inside the 10 to the 7, where it is first and goal, Georgia Tech. 11 yards for the junior from Flipwood, New Jersey. Well, that option just taking advantage of Maryland's inexperience on defense. They've got some young cornerbacks out there. The linebackers trying to trying to accomplish things on the outside. Hamilton comes down the line. It's just his option. He's going to read here to the outside. He's going to take a good pitch out to Rodgers, and Rodgers has the quickness to elude the first tackler and get a few extra yards. 
Wiley, you saw that time, back up to fullback, and he will slide back and forth between those two spots. Right now, he is the lone setback. And takes it left side. Bounces off the first hit. Touchdown. Ran right through Henry Baker to get Georgia Tech on the board. One thing about Charles Wiley on this play is he runs a straight line. Joe Hamilton has to take a deep drop to get back to him. Take a look here as Wiley's going to come out to the right. He's just going to run a straight line to the end zone and go through anything that's there. It goes right through Middleton for the score. Excellent job of just running hard by, by Wiley. Dave Frakes is perfect on all 20 PATs for the year and add one more for a tie. Take a look at here, Wiley just steps, and Joe Helm has to really reach after this ball. Good block on the perimeter, good job there, and then here he squares his shoulders, runs right through Middleton. Excellent job of running, and good job on the corner for blocking for Wiley for the score. And with 5.40 in the first, we're tied in Atlanta. Eighth touchdown of the year for Charles Wiley, junior out of Miami, very well-rounded, and being asked to play both Backfield spots today for Georgia Tech. The key block here is Myers, a tight end. Watch him on the outside, and then Middleton gets in the way, does a defective job of screening him, and Hart Charles Wiley just does it all on the zone from there. And he ran through probably their best run support defensive back, number two, Henry Baker, if he wasn't there. Nothing was going to keep him out, but 7-7. Seven to seven. Wiley doing much of the damage on the scoring drive. Now Frakes ready to kick it away for Georgia Tech. This is right about where he put the opening kick, but Sanders from one yard deep. Watch this one, and Frakes, the last line of defense, unends him at the 39-yard line. He could not get past the kicker and has to settle for 39 yards on the return, could easily have gone 101. Good job by Frakes being there at the last second. If you watch him as he comes straight up the field, watch the blocking in front of him. They sandwich everybody to the outside. A good lane to run through. He's got a lead blocker ahead of him. If he had actually picked up his lead blocker, he might have, might have been able to go all the way. Good job by Frakes. You just see him there. Good job of coming up and making a tackle. Last resort. Kickers do not like to make tackles, but he did a good job of the open field there. Very much appreciated on the bench when they do. Tribute from the tackling uh, side. Jordan hit by Shepard. Let's go down to Christy Deer. Well, in that particular last play, you saw that Maryland ran the ball, and that's just what Larry New told his club. He said, hey, guys, don't panic. It's a 7-7 game. Look for them to run the ball. Now, Cummings is a great quarterback, but I think they're going to come out and run it. That's what they're looking for. That's what they did on that last play. All right, Christy. Now, the first play subsequent, no gain for Maryland. 7-7. Inside five minutes in the first quarter. But Patterson is coming at a wide out. Play action out of the offset eye. And it's Patterson, the target, but he can't hang on. As Rodgers and Caldwell were right behind him, urging him not to hang on. It'll be third and ten. Nice pass by Cummings that time. It's good setup, good protection in front. Does a nice job, gets it outside. Patterson should have caught that football. This is the kind of thing that'll self-destruct for Maryland. They're trying to move the ball down the field. Little play action pass coming, sets up nicely, good protection. Throws the ball right out there on timing. Good job there at closing, but I believe he should have caught that football. Well, he would probably agree. Brian Cummings, looking forward to this football season, did not play baseball last year just to get ready for his final football campaign, his final game today. And Rodgers will be stopped short of the first. Caldwell coming up quick on the screen for Buddy Rogers, and they have to settle for eight. Georgia Tech with good coverage on the guys downfield who could get the first down at first down yardage, and Cummings has to dump it out to Woods, and they come up and make a nice play defensively to stop him just short of the first down. Well, Edwards is up. I don't think we can assume anything. I mean, just because the punter is in means nothing the way... Vander Linden and Craig Johnson, their offensive coordinator, have called this first quarter. Gone for it on fourth down twice, including on a fake field goal. Lee Flicker. Beckwith. Ten on the line. 
as Edwards hangs one very high and Middleton signaling for the fair catch at the 14. 38-yard kick. America's biggest road show rolls into College Station live Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 Central for Texas and the traditional battle with number 16, Texas A&M. And then at 2.30 Eastern, third rank, unbeaten Nebraska and Colorado. That's all Friday on ABC Sports. Well, if either of those rivalries need a trophy or a nickname, they get by plenty good on just mutual disgust. Ed Wilder has come back in at the fullback in the eye as Charles Wiley takes the handoff for about three right into the middle where Eric Barton and his team leading tackle total was waiting for him. Think of Ralph Regan, the offense coordinator from Georgia Tech, has his brothers. He liked to run the football all day and get his running backs in there. He went with a two tight end formation that time, bringing them both to the right side, just trying to hammer it up inside and, and, and you know try to wear down this Maryland defense. Right about four on first down. Charlie Rogers back in at tailback. Play fake to him. Hamilton sets up Rogers for the screen. He eludes one tackler and is run down from behind. Right about at the marker by Eric Obagu. Obagu may be their best defensive player. He's been injured off and on all year, and, and Rogers does a nice job of catching the ball and moving with it after the catch. As we take a look at Ralph Ridgeon, he's trying to call a diverse game, trying to run the ball inside, trying to flip it out a little bit. This is a high percentage pass. He's just going to do a little screen play here to Rogers. Move the ball down the field effectively. Charlie's got enough wiggle to get, to get make some guys miss, and the pursuit catches up from the backside. And Ogabu, I tell you, trying to strip the ball very alert defensive player. Another play action pass for Hamilton. Sideline pattern is oh, Paul and Middleton busted from behind by Cliff Crosby. Looked like a dangerous hit there on Middleton on his right leg as he's going up for the football. Ball was high, a little bit for him. And could have been a tough thing as Hamilton delivers. He's got a good delivery over the top, throws it up there, and watch Milton as he goes up, and the hit right on the right leg. Boy, I thought that was going to be a bad play, but he, he hopped over right away. That's a good sign for Middleton. And delivered by Crosby, former running back. He missed time until midseason himself because of the fractured orbital. Order to come on late the season. Right back to Middleton for about 14 in the first. So I guess he's okay. Yeah, he's fine. Little soft zone that time by Maryland's defense, and good job by Middleton just coming up. He's very smooth. Does a nice job of, of just reading inside. Watch here. The zone's going to open up to the outside. Safety's going to come back, and Middleton just comes work right in between the two defenders. Does a nice job of coming in there, and the safety's going to close over the top. Easy throw for the quarterback to throw when the, when the secondary divides like it did there. And a good start for Hamilton through the air. start for Mike Lilly, 82, the tight end, which will cost Georgia Tech five yards. Good ball, first start on the offense, five yards penalty, and feet to down. It's one of the things George O'Leary wanted to con contain in this game was the mental mistakes, the, the, the penalties. They've been one of the highest penalized teams in the ACC this year, and you know, that's not a George O'Leary team if he, liked it, he doesn't like to do that. Take a look at the left side of your screen. You'll see the tackle here jump. Actually, it's Mike Lilly at tight end. Throw so back it up to the 34. And throw it on first and 15. Charlie Rogers cutting back toward the middle. Past the original line of scrimmage. Across the 40-yard line. You can win tickets to this season's Rose Bowl. Get online with ABC Sports College Football and solve the word puzzles to enter. All on America Online. The keyword is ABC Sports. After Rose Bowl puzzle has been settled, Michigan will be there at 11-0 after holding off Ohio State in their first game today, 20 to 14. That pin still very much. And Hamilton on the option keeper. Turned back from the 42 by Irwin Light, the sophomore weak side backer, who is undersized here at 6 feet 2'11. But good genes, his cousin is Todd Light, former Notre Dame a defensive back, longtime Ram. Yeah, I tell you, Light does a nice job here. 
plays his keys, does his job responsibility. He's got the quarterback all the way here. The contain, the pitches there, the safety's coming up on that. So Hamilton has nowhere to go, and Light does, Light does a nice job of staying at home and making the play. Small but very athletic. I like to blitz him a lot. They see that yet. Here's a third and six. And Hamilton again looks for Middleton. The all-time leading Georgia Tech receiver up to the 44-13 yard pickup. Milton is just a smooth receiver. He's going to run, run the cornerback off. It's just zone coverage. Watch Milton as he gets off. He drives. He's just going to plant and come back. This looks like it's automatic between him and Hamilton. They've been throwing a ball together for a long time. They were cousins growing up. And I say that's just old time touching right there. Yeah, it wasn't hard to, to practice that because they have uh, had basically their whole lives to do it. Hamilton from Alvin, South Carolina. Middleton from Jamestown. Not too far away. Street pattern. Siegel with the catch for the touchdown. The last two games, Derek Siegel has been on fire catching these bombs from Joe Hamilton. He just seems to throw the ball up, and Derek Siegel with his great speed just goes down the field and picks him off. It's a great job there by Hamilton finding the open receiver to the middle of the field. 44-yarder. This is a guy who had to wonder if his entire career was going to be wasted by one injury after another after another. And late in his senior year, he's finally regained his 4-2 speed. And defenses throughout the ACC are paying for his emergence back to health. Well, you'll see it just play action pass. Joe Helm does all the time in the world. Does a nice job. Just lays it up top to, to Stiegel, who's on the outside. Coming, he got behind the safety. Does a nice job of just looking for the football and protecting the catch. Steele just got a beat on this one. He's behind the safety. Has, safety has no chance to make that play. He should have tried to really knock the receiver off his course or, or do something. And Hamilton just delayed it because of his performance so far and the catch by Steagle. Hamilton and Middleton are a favored connection, of course. But the last two weeks when Hamilton has just put up the unbelievable number, there is the guy he's looked for. Against Virginia, school record, 223 receiving yards. Came into that game with 150 all season and then exploded. Last week against Duke, six catches, 126 yards. It had one of 61 called back because of a penalty. Stiegel is pretty amazing. He's a, you know, in the last 14 months, he's had two complete reconstructive surgeries on his knee. Uh, and, you know, I tell you, in the spring, they thought he wouldn't be back this late in the season, you know, playing like he is. George O'Leary told us he's finally back to full speed. Got it, obviously doing well the last three weeks, and on that play, it's evidence that he's back and running really well. Sanders almost took one 101 yards last time, and Brakes makes the adjustment as he deals it on the run at the 10. John Myers came up to still it as he reached the 22 that time. The return goes only 12 yards with only 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter. Nice recovery by that group after they fell down 7 to 9. You take, a look, take a look at Frazier here on the sideline. Just, you know, chatting with his offensive lineman, making sure things are going okay. They're doing a pretty good job of picking up the any kind of pressure that's coming from the from Maryland. frazier has got to be excited about you know, how his offense has responded here after Maryland took the ball down the field. So, for the first time today, coming from behind, Maryland from the 22. And Jordan getting away from Derek Shepard, but he had friends waiting, and this will lose two yards. Derek Shepard, very active in this first quarter. He's, he's a guy that has underachieved a little bit in his career at Georgia Tech. He's going yeah. pretty well today. He is. He's a big guy. He's a guy who does a lot inside, and he's got to go against Ben Thomas' the center. He's just a freshman now and, uh, from Maryland. He's got his hand full of Derek Shepard. So we're through with one quarter in Atlanta. Georgia Tech fighting back to lead 14 to 7 at Bobby Dodd Stadium. One win away from a bowl that might come today. All on ABC Sports. Second quarter from Atlanta. Dave Barnett, Gary Reasons, and Christy Deer. It's 14 to 7, Georgia Tech. Maryland will have it on the second down and 11 from their 21-yard line. Their touchdown of the first quarter coming 
as a direct result of a fake field goal, which got him into first and goal position. And now coming from behind for the first time. Cummings over the middle. A lot of room for Jordan. Runs right through Keith Brooking, and not very many do that. It goes 18 yards. Let's go down to Christie. Okay, who you're looking at right here, number nine, Derek Stiegel. This guy is just amazing. Got a great story on him. His first game ever as a freshman for Georgia Tech had an 80-yard reception, right? Well, then the year after that, he broke his arm, didn't get to play. The year after that, bad hamstring problem, didn't get to play. He has had two ligament operations. The last one, he has a cadaver's ligament in his knee. He's the guy who just caught the touchdown pass for Georgia Tech. He is definitely back for his senior season and playing quite well. A cadaver's ligament, something that uh, is on the cutting edge, I guess, of sports medicine today. They said he probably wouldn't have gone that route, but he had nothing to lose. It was, uh, it was in his case, a low-risk decision because so much of his career had already passed and he had just a few months. If the body had rejected the ligament, then this season would have been lost too, but happily for Derek, it didn't, and he is all the way back. That's great. It's a good story for him and the way he's responded here late in the season. Uh, it's good things here for Georgia Tech and Derek Stiegel. I interviewed him you know, last year before a ball game, just after he was injured, just before after he was injured, and uh, he was very disheartened. He couldn't play last year, and good to see him back in the lineup for the Yellow Jackets this season. Sub 4-3 speed, about as fast as we'll see on this field today. Up the middle goes Buddy Rogers. And coughed it up at the end of a nice power run, and Georgia Tech has the recovery. Dan Witherspoon, who got the start at nose guard. Well, a good secure handoff inside to Rogers. Looked like he was plowing away, but uh, I'm sure that somebody just pulled it away from him. Watch it here. You see Rogers coming inside. You know, Derek Shepard is getting good block on him. Rogers, oh, that must have been Brooking popping inside just to knocking it away. Watch here from this side of your screen. He's going to come in on Rogers. No, that's 58. Justin Roberts. Yeah, Justin Robinson makes the makes yeah. the crosses the fumble and then with the spoon on the recovery. Well, that's two of the defensive changes in the starting lineup paying off. Robertson and Witherspoon both moved into the starting group today. And they combine on the takeaway. Hamilton again going deep for Stegall. Oh again! At the one. Seven yards on the heels of their 44-yard touchdown. Well, Joe Hamilton watching here. He's just going to get hit by light from the outside. Good pop there. Hamilton's already got it away, though, and Stiegel's running under. Watch him here. He's just going to outrun the corner. Does a nice job of pull, pulling the ball in. Stiegel has that 4-2 speed, as you said, Dave. Just hard to contain a guy with that much speed. Crosby barely able to prevent a second consecutive touchdown connection between Hamilton and Stieg also first and goal from the one yard line and the give to the H back for the touchdown Ed Wilder Things are clicking like this for an offense. You know, the passing game, Joe Hamilton, the last couple of weeks, we talked about what he has done. And today, he's just picking up right where he left off. Good job here by the right side of the offensive line, making a good hole there for Wilder. He just squares his shoulder and just bullies it into the end zone for the touchdown. Just his sixth carry of his freshman year. 6'2", 250-pounder. Brandon Shaw to hold. Breaks extra point. We're going to have to figure out some way to run with Derek Stiegel, who has set up Georgia Tech for a 21 7 lead. It's tonight. Wally Egg, defensive coordinator from Maryland, longtime Ken Hatfield assistant at Rice, Arkansas, Air Force, and Clemson. I would venture to say, Gary, he will find a way not to have. Crosby one-on-one -on -one with Stegall anymore if he can help it. Well, that might be a mismatch. I mean, they may have to play some really soft, deep zone to make sure that Stegall doesn't get behind them. But, uh, you know, there's just got to be a way to get that done. I think that, that he's trying to pull anything he can to stop that from happening again. Two catches, 91 yards, one touchdown, one near touchdown for Stegall. Sanders 
come down at the 12. Just 10 on the return for the fired up special teams for Georgia Tech, Kofi Smith. America's biggest road show rolling on next Saturday at 1 Eastern Regional Action. Number 6 Penn State against Michigan State or right back here, number 14 Georgia and Georgia Tech. And at 4.30 Eastern, 3.30 Central, 1.30 Pacific on ABC Sports, it's the Skins game. You'll see four of America's top players, Tiger Woods, Tom Levin, Mark O'Mara, and defending champ Fred Couples. All members of the U.S. Ryder Cup team in the Skins game Thanksgiving weekend. Jordan ran through the first tackle and then stopped by Ralph Hughes at the 14. Well, it's going to be Maryland's job now, their offense, to get back into this football game. You know, Georgia Tech is trying to move the ball down the field effectively with two big plays in the passing game. Maryland, you know, they're going to have to make some plays here, get stay on the field a little bit, have a chance to drive the ball. We'll take a look at Craig Johnson, the offensive coordinator now for, for Maryland. He's going to have to, you know, change things up a little bit. He had a good game plan starting early, moving the ball around, a little short, short passes to the backs and the receivers coming inside. Cummings done a good job of delivering the football as well. It just hasn't been caught on occasion. Shotgun draw. Worked pretty well once this time. Jordan comes near the first down. He needed the 23-yard line, and that's where Brooking has it. And what we were told is, is definitely coming true for Jordan. This would be a busy day for him. Yeah. Come on, Jordan. is a very capable uh, running back, running and receiving. You watch him here on the little draw inside. Does a nice job. He's a good load. He, I think the way he runs effectively is he gets his shoulders down. He keeps his body lean going forward. He's always making positive yardage. It's already 12 carries for 30 yards for Lamont Jordan. And as they stretch it, that one is enough for the first down. Ron Vander Linden brought along with him from Gary Barnett's staff at Northwestern, Craig Johnson. Johnson, their quarterback coach for the last five years. Well, what Vander Linden did is he, you know, he assembled a staff that had 44 bowl victories or bowl attendances amongst them. So they've got a lot of experience there, and they're going to build on this team, and they're trying to do it with the staff and with the young players. It's going to take a little time, though. It's not going to happen overnight, and I think the people in Maryland know that. for Jordan and he seems to be like most of the great backs gaining strength with the extra workload 12 more yards as uh, Messina Brad the left guard helped clear things out for him well Messina's doing a good job and so is Gilliam the left tackle and a uh, good job here by Jordan just picking his way watching the right side of the screen you'll see Messina on the inside good job on the defensive tackle and Jordan comes inside of that, does a nice job of reading the blocks up front. Good push from the offensive line. Well, it takes about half the defense to uh, take care of Jordan. Again through an arm tackle for about eight. I mean, it's like the rodeo when <laughs> he has it. Looks like kind of Earl the Pearl Campbell running the ball here. I tell you, just, you know, Georgia Tech, though, they are missing a few tackles up front. And Ron Rogers, you see there, he's kind of the captain of that defense inside, and he's not liking that. He does a little quick start and stop here. He finds the hole. He lets the, the, the hole open up in front of him, then he just goes forward. Good job there. He's strong, that's for sure. That was Justin Robertson, who has him by about 20 pounds. Uh, the, the attempted arm tackle, which Jordan just ran right through, and he picks up eight. Make it second and two from the 43. Already 15 carries. And here comes number 16. Tries to get around the, that left side. Jesse Tarplin, though, grabs from behind, hangs on, and makes the tackle. But it will be enough for another first down. So Maryland, Gary, which started as wide open as you can in terms of their play selection, now about as conservative as you can get. Well, you might expect that as you see here. Got a player down for Georgia Tech. That's Jerry Caldwell, the junior corner. You know, Ron Vanderlyn and his offensive philosophy is going to be very much, very similar to what Gary Barnett has done in, uh, with Northwestern. He's going to be very conservative, trying to move the ball effectively, running it inside, off tackle, in inside the tackles. Possession passes. He's not going to try to get too crazy with the passing game. You don't see too many three wide, four wide receiver combinations out there. Well, as they uh, attend to Jerry Caldwell, today's Marriott moment takes us back one year ago to College Park, Maryland. 
And it was Tech and Maryland battling on a cold Thursday night at Bird Stadium. Brian Cummings, second quarter touchdown pass. G. Roy Simon to give the Terps the lead. And Orlando Strozier with two Joe Hamilton interceptions in the last three and a half minutes to seal the upset win for the Terps, 13 to 10. One of the games that uh, denied Georgia Tech a bowl berth last year as they uh, had a 5-3 start go sour at the end of the season. George O'Leary trying to avoid that, but his immediate concern is the condition of Jerry Caldwell. Take a look, we'll see if we can we'll see what happened to Caldwell here. He just gets right in the middle of the play. Really hard to see what happened to him there on back on the left side of your screen. See Caldwell here, he's on the right of your screen. He, you know, he just squares him up on the shoulders. He gets his helmet twisted around there. Looks like his helmet may have come loose. Jerry Jr. from Chester, South Carolina. They say they're most consistent defensive back, and they've had uh, an awful lot of upheaval <laughs> in the last couple of weeks in that group, so they would hate to have to do without him for any amount of time. We'll break here in Atlanta with Georgia Tech leading by 14. Well, that's a happy sight. Jerry Caldwell uh, finally awake again. I'm not sure if he is uh, exactly aware of where he is or what happened, but at least up and walking toward the bench with a nice hand. Defensive coordinator Dave Huxtable now waiting to hear what the report will be from the bench and whether he can return. Do you ever have that happen, just uh, completely knocked out? Only once in college for me. I, I hit a guy so hard to knock me out of the field. I woke up on the bench. I'm sure he wouldn't know what happened with Caldwell. He lived up over there in the third quarter sometime. Did you get back in that game? I did. I don't remember anything in the second half. Against the blitz, Buddy Rogers taken down immediately by Kofi Smith who was another of the defensive lineup changes today. They moved Caldwell from uh, the boundary corner to the field corner, who played most of the field, and Smith coming up on the other corner. Watch your right side. Kobe Smith is playing what they call the boundary corner. He does a nice job of reading the play, coming up very effectively, a good job of tackling on a big back on Jordan. Kobe Smith, he's a very capable player. He's just had some big plays go over the top of him this year, last couple of weeks, and you know, they're just trying to get him in a good spot where they feel like he's more comfortable and that's a nice job of coming up and making a play. Total effort guy. One reason that he earned the start today. Jordan... And gets his right there to meet him again. So a defense that was looking for some enthusiasm has gotten that injection they were looking for. Well, Kofi Smith is coming up doing a nice job there. You can see he's from Florence and Alabama and does a nice job coming up again, making a play. Watch him here. He's going to backpedal and then come force the run. The cornerbacks have the job of forcing the run to the outside. It's a nice job. And Jordan tries to lower the shoulder to run through Kofi, but he's got a good, leg, good leverage and good lower body strength. Football at third and ten. Cummings trying to get Maryland reignited. Down by 14. Three wide outs. And the deep out is caught. Moses Cruz, their leading receiver, the three, the uh, redshirt freshman out of Germantown, Maryland, got free for 20 yards up the left side. Well, as we go to praise Kofi Smith, he misses the jab here. They're playing two deep zone coverage, and he's off too much. And he has to reroute the receiver. He doesn't do it, so he gets in behind. The safety cannot get over and make the play. This is zone coverage all the way, and they get right in the void of the zone. Kofi Smith would have had to reroute him closer to the safety for him to, for him to be able to come over. Good, good job that time execution-wise for Maryland. Only other freshman who's ever led Maryland in receiving, Frank Wycheck. Back at 90, now the Oilers. Play fake, Cummings looking for cheese ball, and he has the catch at the 12-yard line in front of Jason Bostic for 20 yards. Cheeseboro gets his first start today, does a nice job at the flanker position, coming inside, and I think this is a one-handed catch as we look at it here. Cheeseboro, he's one-on-one -on -one to the outside, makes the inside move, does a nice job. The ball's going to be thrown a little bit behind him. He grabs, gets in there, almost has a little help there from Bostic pushing it in. Nice job reception for Cheeseboro. That's part of the youth that Vander Linden discussed for the game. This is, uh, as far as he's concerned, just a preview, not the end of 97. 
treating it more like the first game of the 98 season. Cummings won't be there, but just about everybody else we've seen from Maryland will. Jordan, chief among them. And again, Kofi Smith comes up and it read perfectly. Well, Kofi was coming on what they call an outside cat blitz from the outside, and Kofi just comes in, misdirection play, and the play developed too slow, and Kofi Smith does a nice job of making a play in the end zone. Watch the left side of your screen here. Kofi Smith is going to come hard from the outside. That's the blitz I'm talking about. Kofi does a nice job wrapping up the big back, Jordan. The pressure inside by Tarplin and, and Shepard really set up the play. I'm not sure if Dave Huxtable has totaled eight hours of sleep <laughs> all this week after his defense allowed the second most yards in school history, 610 in the three-point survival win over Duke last week. Well, batted down as soon as it left the arm of Cummings. Jesse Tarplin was there. Talking about Huxtable, we were in his office the other day, and on the floor there's a, what, a sleeping bag, a blanket, and I think he spent some long hours up in that office trying to straighten things out for this Georgia Tech defense. Really intense guy. I think the players really respond to him, and he's got his heart and soul on this one. Really was pleased with the defense they played up through the first half of the Florida State game. That one, at that point, was 7 to nothing. They lost it 38 to nothing. They've never recovered their defensive confidence since then. And that's all the changes this week. Coming down on a blitz. Tarplin with his fourth sack of the year. Well, you got to press. Get credit to Derek Shepard coming up on the inside. He's the one that made him step up, coming, coming step up into the rush. Tarplin's just finishing the play, but Derek Shepard, big 92, does a nice job. Watch him here. He's the left defensive tackle in front of you here in front of the guard. Makes a move to the outside. Pressure's coming right up inside. And here comes Tarplin for the sack. Good job. Good pressure by the defensive line for Georgia Tech. Rogers helping out. On comes Brian Kafka. And a 38-yard attempt. Not much angle. Pretty strong leg, and he has sent it through. So that ends the 21-point unanswered streak by Georgia Tech. Midway in the second, Maryland within 11, 21 to 10 at Bobby Dodd Stadium. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by the 1997 Pontiac Bonneville luxury with attitude. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know, use Valvoline. And Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Ranch Hand Filet. I'm guessing you have sampled more than your share of those. <laughs> 21 to 10. Georgia Tech, 7 minutes and 14 seconds in the second quarter. And almost a disaster as Virgil Johnson had some contact from behind, but nice concentration to hang on to that one at the 30. Let's go down to Christy Deer. Well, here's the good news, bad news kind of deal for Jerry Caldwell. The good news is he's going to be okay. The bad news is he does have a concussion, and they've taken him inside for observation. And here's the other bad part about this. Well, he had an interception last week, been playing well, but he's not going to be expected back in this football game. He's got a little bit of a cut lip underneath his uh, lip there, and his nose was bleeding. Concussion, he's out of this contest. All right, that is a blow for Georgia Leary's beleaguered secondary they have to do without their steadiest member in this game they need or else they got to get georgia next week to qualify for one of the acc automatic bowl positions charlie rogers leading through right tackle for 15 yards into the arms finally of kendall ogle Really impressive. Charlie Rogers is a loose one. His little misdirection play that's going to come off tackle to the open side. Charlie Rogers just picks his way through there, does a nice job of finding openings. I think that's what he does best. He's just trying to find a little area to run through. Yeah, yards per carry, uh, he's about their best, really. Better than, uh, well, right at 4.3 yards per carry. Philip Rogers and Wiley, who are ahead of him on their depth chart, both less than four yards per carry. And he's done productive so far, so they keep running him. This time, again, right tackle. 
Better response by the Terps, and they limit it to about two as the nose guard, Delbert Cowsett, comes up to plug the gap. Charlie Rogers getting a good block there by Virgil Johnson, the fullback coming up to the outside. He's taking advantage of a big fullback block. And does a nice job. He and Wiley both, the Rogers and Wiley, just run the ball hard inside this goal to take off. Here. Okay, second down, and we'll call it six. Good shot of midfield. Offset eye and a play fake for Hamilton. Pulls up, finds Chris Myers, his tight end, and a first down to the 40-yard line on just the seventh catch this year for Myers. He goes for 11 before the tackle by Parton. Coming up next, the Valvoline Halftime 97 brought to you by Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics, people who know use Valvoline. John Saunders, Todd Blackledge in the studio. They'll have the highlights from Michigan's 20 to 14 victory to show up the Big Ten over Ohio State. Everything else underway around the country. On rivalry Saturday, Hamilton tried to go to Steagle. Here comes the late flag on Lewis Sanders, who appeared to be just a hair early. Steagle comes in motion to the inside and crosses all the way across the field. Joe Hamilton hasn't picked out in his sights. He's going to go him to him all the way. Defensive pass interference from the spot. Plenty forced on the spot. First down. You see Stegall coming from the outside here. He's just going to come across the field, a little play action pass. Does a nice job. He gets to the open area as Hamilton delivering the ball. The defender just gets there a little too soon. Good call there by the official. Not much. Yeah, that's pretty close to an outstanding defensive play. Understandable that they would want to keep as close as possible to Stegall, who's burned it for 44 and 47 yards already in this first half. He goes in motion. Hamilton on the option keeper. Up five yards to the 27. Hit by Chris Jenkins and Irwin Light. You know, Ralph Legion comes back to this Georgia Tech offense. He's been with the San Diego Chargers for a number of years, and he was here with O'Leary back in 91, and when they won this national championship in 1990. Uh, it's, it's, he's an offensive coordinator who has a lot of experience. He's one of the best in the business. We're happy to have him back here doing a nice job of mixing the play calling up today. And a Maryland grad, class of 69, six-year assistant on Bobby Ross's staff before Ross came uh, over here to Georgia Tech. Middleton. You could see that coming. He had it in one hand. It wasn't hard to knock free, and it cost Georgia Tech possession. At the 16-yard line, it's recovered by Henry Baker after Eric Barton took basically a gift from Middleton. He never tucked it away, and you figured that was going to happen. Yeah, he had the ball out there. Anthony Jenkins, I think, came from the outside, just, just pursuing the football here. Watch as you see across the middle. Hamilton just throws it right into Middleton. The ball gets inside, and watch from the backside. It's going to be Anthony Jenkins tip the ball out. Good job there by Maryland coming up for the ball. And the ball is a little wobbly getting there. Might have been tipped at the line of scrimmage. Good tackling job there by Maryland's defense. So Middleton, who has as much experience as any wideout on the field, with the turnover, and Jordan turned away from the 20 as he goes left side on the sweep. Rodgers and Brooking chase him down over there. Witherspoon that time had a shot at him. You're not going to get him down with one arm grabbing around him. I see, we see that Jordan has enough, has enough power to run through those arm tackles, obviously, and enough speed to get to the outside. I'm really impressed with him, and I think that there's going to be a good, good future here for this team with, with him in the tailback position. Well, he's coming up and may have, uh, by halftime, a new freshman record for carries in one game. He owns it. It was 22 carries against North Carolina State two weeks ago in their last outing. 19 carries already. Intercepted. Intended for Hatala. Travaris Tillman has the pick for the Yellow Jackets. And brings it back 10 yards. Excellent coverage by Tillman that time. Does a nice job staying inside the receiver. The ball probably just a little bit underthrown, but Tillman does a nice job of picking up the interception. 
Take a look here on the left side of your screen. Tillman's going to be the strong safety. You'll see him come into the picture. I mean, inside route. Cummings throws the ball. Should have got the ball up over the, the strong safety, but Tillman does a nice job staying inside. Good interception. Third of the year for Tillman. And taken over in great shape inside the 30 with an 11-point lead to add to. And 3.49 remaining in the first half. Hamilton on a draw, gives to Charlie Rogers. Maybe one, not much more here. Well, tonight on ABC, a look at Fergie in a whole new way. It's an hour of adventures with the Duchess here in America. Then a special edition of Primetime Live and a fabulous brand new episode of The Practice all tonight on ABC. Gain of one for Rogers, so second to nine. Georgia Tech nearing a 600-yard pace. Total yardage. Most of that 180 through the air on two passes. Hamilton to Stegall, who is wide right. Hamilton will have the first down. Great snap by the single-wing tailback, Ogle and Barton on the tackle. Hey, Joe Hamilton is pretty exciting. He's throwing the ball exceptionally well today, and obviously he's got enough gifted ability to run the football. George O'Leary told us, he said, you know, last year he was a he was an athlete playing quarterback, but this year he's a quarterback who is an athlete. You can see his ability here running through the line and does a nice job. It's a design play for him to get outside, and Joe Hamilton has all the tools to run the football as well as throw it. Gotten better every game, says O'Leary. Every time he has to make one, that one is batted down at the line. Yeah, if there's a negative on Joe Hamlin, it's his height. He's only 5'10 or so, and you know, he's got to get the ball up and over the defensive line, which is difficult at times. And I don't think he has a problem with the vision, but I think he does a, a nice job with the high delivery. You know, Johnny Hicks is going to come in here, the big defensive tackle, get his hand up. Does a nice job there, timing his jump. Just a three-step drop, and the you know, defensive linemen are talking when their quarterback's going on a three-step drop. Just get your hands up. You're not going to get there anyway. Might as well get in, get in line for the fly of the ball. It's just now really recovering from a neck injury he suffered all the way back in two a day. Hamilton, well protected, but decides to keep. Run down by Anthony Jenkins. Jenkins does a nice job inside, but that's the kind of play that Joe Hamilton a year ago probably would have thrown the ball into coverage. That's what George O'Leary likes about him now. He's making better decisions. He doesn't try to make the play. You know, last year he thought he had to make every play for his team to get going, and this year he settled into the offense, being able to make good decisions and not trying to force the ball. You know, the thing you don't want to do after turnover is get the ball right back to, to the defense, and I think Hamilton did the nice, the right thing there, stepping up and trying to just elude the run. So on third and 11, again, he's got to step up and delivers, but short of the first down is where Mike Sheridan makes his first catch of the evening. Their third receiver, and you can probably hear the sentiment of the Yellow Jacket fans on what will be a fourth and two. But they will not get their wish unless there's a fake as Dave breaks and the field goal unit will come on. Yeah, George O'Leary didn't hesitate in watching him on the sidelines, but he's swinging that leg, kick, kick, kick all the way. He knows exactly what this team needs to do, and he'd rather put the points on the board. They're ahead 21 to 10. This would be a nice, comfortable two-touchdown lead going into the halftime. 8 of 11 for the year. This one just 27 yards. minute one to go in the first half. Georgia Tech back up by 14 as we go to John Saunders. Lotus organizer. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97, a look back at that Michigan-Ohio State game. It was a great one. Yeah, it really was. Michigan coming into the ball game, leading the nation in three of the top four defensive categories. They didn't disappoint anybody today. Great defensive performance. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. Back at Bobby Dodd Stadium in Atlanta, where Georgia Tech has recovered from an early 7 0 deficit. Georgia 
Georgia Tech, one win away from bowl eligibility, up 24 to 10. Right now, let's pause for a word from the NCAA. You want to see where the real action is in a college football game? Well, look right here. The domain of the mighty coach. Oh, he's all over my guy. I want to see a popcorn trap on right. 50 yards of pacing room with a little left over to flail your arm. I sure you've been doing much flailing. He doesn't do much flailing. 79, I need a head nod or something. You're just leaving me over here standing. Hey, let's hustle up there. Let's get that going. Let's get that going a little bit. That's what I want to do. And needing to nail down the one more win, the bowl possibilities are certainly there for the Yellow Jackets. Possibly the Peach right here in Atlanta. The Carquest is a, another that will have uh, their eyes on the ACC. It's been since that Aloha bid in 91, one year after they won the national title in the Citrus, since Georgia Tech has had any postseason action. And yeah, this could tie them. If they win this ball against Maryland, they'll be tied with uh, Virginia for the, the third spot in the ACC. And then it's just the picks there from the bowls to see who they make some Jason Hatala and not Sanders this time. And Hatala tripped up before he could really bust that one big. It's 28 yards. And it was Justin Robertson who just did reach out and trip up. Jason Hatala, a true freshman from Centerville, Virginia. Hatala does a nice job of moving straight up the field and following the blockers. And there's one little hand on his foot there. Otherwise, he might have gone around the kicker for a score. Fifty-five seconds for Cummings to work with. And last time out, Cummings throws the ball inside, and, and Tillman picks it off, and they take the ball down. Good conversion there on the turnover for the for the field goal for Georgia Tech. Last thing he wants to do here is give the ball up again, and let Georgia Tech get another score. So, you know, I would be real surprised if that was only his sixth interception of the season for for the quarterback. And I don't think he's going to make a mistake again like that. Omar Cheeseboro gets out of bounds. After getting nine on the first down, Maryland has averaged gaining only four yards on first down, and Georgia Tech before they were stuffed on their last first down had averaged 11.3 on first down in this first half. Well, that's a big play to Stegall. I think <laughs> that'll throw things out of whack a little bit, but uh, overall, I think the offense from Maryland, they need to settle down. When they get into halftime, they'll regroup, find a way to do something different against the Georgia Tech defense. We really think pretty good offense for football right now. Maryland, all three timeouts. Georgia Tech also has all three. Cummings, overthrown and almost intercepted by Kofi Smith. Trying to get Cruz, and he was nowhere near Moses. Well, that was the same play they converted on early in the ballgame. We talked about Smith, who didn't reroute. That time he got depth in his own coverage. Almost came up with an interception. Come as he throws the ball, and I tell you, as a quarterback as a senior, he's taking a lot of shots, and you know, he's hoping that this ball is going to be caught there. And then twist pulls him down to the ground. Which shown by Tech, but the give is to Jordan, and he will have the first down. Apparently stopped the clock. And they move the chains. I don't know why they're not calling timeout here. They really should be calling timeout. They need to call the timeout. They have plenty of them. Go ahead and use them here to your advantage while you have the, the 39 seconds. They're losing ticks off the clock. Boy, no, that's, a, that's at least one play, maybe two. That uh, they get nothing out of by waiting until now 16 seconds to call the timeout. Yeah, the clock was down to 32 seconds at 17 seconds. It you know, could have been on there for, like you said, one or two more plays here, Dave. Uh, that's just four o'clock management. Well, that's something that uh, for a first-year head coach, it's, it's one of the things that he has to learn as well? <laughs> well, maybe maybe so, but uh, I think that on that third down play, they were probably just looking to run the clock and keep the clock running. Maybe you get the first down, maybe not. Probably surprising that they got the first down as easily as they did with Jordan running the football. They're going to put some time back on the clock. Uh, I'm not sure that it stopped when it was supposed to, or as long as it was supposed to, on the first down play. Yeah. 
think I heard the officials say they're going to put three on there. It's up to 18 now. And uh, in fact, it's, it's a bit of a handicap for the team going that way because uh, you can't look as you're going left to right at the clock. That scoreboard to our right is out. That one works to our left. 18 seconds to go. Let's pause for this message from ABC. Second and 12, 18 seconds from the 47 for Maryland. Hoping for a little momentum going into the halftime locker room. Cheeseboro and hit immediately by Tillman. 45 of Georgia Tech, 12 seconds. Timeout number two for the Turks. And then 12 seconds, you can take a couple of pretty good deep shots. Yeah, they can take a couple of shots. They've also got a chance to get the ball down, at least get in the field goal range here and, and set up. And, you know, it'd be a, be a confidence boost for Maryland to, to score here before the half. Field goal range for Kafka this year, his best is 47, but in high school in Hollywood, Florida, up to 56 yards. You know, Ron Vanderlyn and you know, coming into the season lost some question marks about Cummings. You know, a year ago he kind of was a kind of a, a big mouth at times on the field. Let's just put it that way, and kind of ran into some problems with some of his players as far as his comments and attitudes. And, but I tell you, Ron Vanderlyn did the right thing when he came in here. The first thing he did was take his senior quarterback and sat him down and talked to him and told him, said, "Hey, these are the things that I like about your game, what I don't like about your game." And from day one, they've had a good relationship. Brian Cummings has been their starter the whole season. Done a pretty good job for him under the circumstances. And uh, you know, as we said earlier, that was only a six interception for the year, and I think that's pretty good numbers for a, for a team that's probably had to throw the ball quite a bit. But the way he got his attention in that first meeting was he started with, "Here's what I don't like about yeah. you," and uh, that from that point on kind of established who was. Uh, who was going to be uh, making most of the suggestions in the relationship, but it's been a good relationship, and he has really nothing but good things to say about Ryan Cummings' senior year. Handles the low snap. And getting out of bounds at the 33 is Cheeseboro. That took only four seconds and gets him 12 yards into what would be the outer edges of Ryan Kopka field goal range. Yeah, that'll be about a 50-yard field goal. They're going to kick it here now, and I think it's just a little bit outside of it, as you said, Dave. But they have eight seconds on the clock. I mean, they have a quick chance to get a quick play to the outside, and, uh, maybe have a little shorter range, or even just throw it up to the end zone. Well, again, the three receivers and the shotgun. Not much pressure as Cruz inbounds for the catch at the 27 with five seconds to go so on will come Kopka at the field goal unit and they'll try what will be about a 45 yarder to end the first half well that's good execution there by Maryland Dolphins. just taking what they need to get seven more yards get him in the field goal range Kopka's going to come on attempt the kick I think that's something they can build on things like that for this for the future for this team and the Vanderlyn is not going to go crazy he's not going to throw the ball down the field he's going to keep the three points going to half you know regroup his team but George O'Leary has all three of his timeouts, so why not use one of them here and make the young freshman think about it a little bit. John Saunders and Todd Blackledge coming up from New York. Our Valvoline halftime report. Just as soon as we conclude our first half. Rose Bowl picture cleared up quite a bit earlier today with Michigan's victory. They'll have that to discuss. And the rivalries playing out in the Pac-10. UCLA and USC hooked up in a good one. Washington State, Washington. Next week, Arizona State hoping they still have a shot at a return trip as they take on Arizona. As you look at Ron Benwell, and I can, you know, come to think of what he's done for this whole program. He's come into Maryland, obviously after a, you know, a group of guys with Mark Duffner leaving the program there. They were a run-and-shoot offense. They've had to change completely with what they're doing this year. And uh, it's kind of a rebuilding process, and I think he's doing things the right way. So here comes 44 yards for Kafka. Good snap and hold. Plenty of leg, but he hooked it. Well, just about everything except the kick went right on the last drive for Vander Linden and the Terps. O'Leary heads to the locker room up by 14 points at 24 to 10. As Ron watched, and that one never really all that close as Kafka drove it wide left. 
to Buzz's delight. We'll have a station break, followed by John and Todd and the Valvoline Halftime Report. Halftime in Atlanta has the Yellow Jackets up 24-10. All on ABC Sports. And our halftime score in Atlanta, 24-10, Georgia Tech leading Maryland. Here in the ACC, Dave Barnett, Gary Reasons, Christy Deer at Bobby Dodd Stadium at Grant Field. The Dean Witter first half stats. Georgia Tech, 285 total, 189 through the air. Two big strikes, Hamilton to Seagull. Maryland gets over 200 total yards with their late drive for the missed field goal. And uh, as they trail by 14, I think they moved the ball well enough, Gary, in the first half to have certainly a lot of hope that they can continue to try and make this a game in the second half. Yeah, Maryland does does do a good job moving the football against his Georgia Tech defense. But I'll tell you, Georgia Tech's offense has really been clicking. They've been hitting on all cylinders, the big pass at the Seagull. And I think the running backs for Georgia Tech are really, really coming around. You've got Rogers doing good things, Wiley doing good things. But uh, I tell you, Lamont Jordan, I think he's got over 20 carries in the first half alone. So it's, uh, it's been a pretty even match as far as the running backs are concerned, but the big passing game for Georgia Tech is a big story. Back in the first half, a fumble. And then they score on three consecutive possessions until another fumble. Finally close to the field goal. Hopka to start quarter number three. Bringing it back is Charlie Rogers, who had a big first half, and it's caught from behind of the 45-yard line for Maryland. After a 33-yard return, Todd Stewart, number 18, Third is there finally to ride him down. Well, Maryland's trying to place the ball, kicking it to Rogers, but I tell you, he's done a nice job moving the ball around in the back, but I'm not sure I want to kick it to him in the open field. Parker was thrown at the tail end of that return. Back <laughs> as Robin Wood says, illegal block in the back. So not near the field position that O'Leary thought his offensive unit would begin the second half with. Stieg, although a man that uh, a couple of times got deep against Crosby, and look at the three-game stretch at the tail end of his career that he's put together. Now, this is amazing for a wide receiver. The numbers are just, just astounding. The reception number against Virginia is a uh, seven. That's a, that's a school record, seven of 223 in today, but two big catches. Uh, this is great play by a, by a wide receiver who hasn't had a lot of action up to date. I shared it in motion. And the give to Charles Wiley, who is hit behind the line of scrimmage. This may lose one or two. Good reacting nose guard, Delbert Cowsett, the sophomore out of Cleveland, who leads the defensive line. 61 stops coming in, 10 of those behind the line of scrimmage, and here's another one for a loss. Now he plays that offset nose guard position for, for Maryland defense. Does a nice job of penetration. Good tackle in the backfield for Cowsett. Stegall coming wide right, and Lindy Washington is now the man they have matched up with him at that left corner. Hamilton has Middleton over the middle. Henry Baker on the tackle after a 34-yard strike between the Cousins from South Carolina. Well, Joe Hamilton has his pick of receivers here. He goes to Middleton, but Seagull on the left side is going to come open. Hamilton's looking at his play action to his left. And I think Middleton's probably his first receiver coming across the middle. Does a nice job of laying it out there. Open territory between the two series, I mean, between the two defenders. Now, take a look at Seagull here. He's just running up, and behind, there's nobody there. He's wide open for the touchdown if, if Hamilton chooses to throw it to him. Well, he's battling uh, a lot of personal history there. Hamilton looking for... For years and years, his favorite target. Wiley at the 41. Let's go down to Christie. George O'Leary told his team at halftime, he told the offensive line, he said, look, guys, you got to stay on your offensive tackles. you got to stay on the D-line. And he told Joe Hamilton, I want you to be more decisive. Don't let the defense know what you're going to do and stay a step ahead of them. That's pretty good advice. Now, this is going to cost him 10 on holding. So two penalties 
on this opening possession of the third quarter against Georgia Tech. One wipes out a nice return. This one moves them back to their 45 from where it will be first and 18. Almost perfect through the yeah. air, Hamilton. Yeah, look at those numbers, 11 or 13. That's tremendous and 223 yards. Can't get much better than that in the first half and here in the second. Quarterback draw. Hamilton, nice cut back. Washington, though, was able to follow those Many moves, and at the 27, he at last is there for the tackle. 28-yard quarterback draw for Hamilton. You know, as a defense, you try to cover the receivers, but then here's somebody who's dropping back to pass, and he takes off the run. It's, it's kind of a tough play to defend, but in Joe Hamilton's credit, he's got a lot of ability and a lot of speed. He's just picking his way. Good job of blocking up front and opening the holes for Hamilton. Troy Davidson is the injured turf. Maybe caught in a pile at the end of that play near the 25-yard line. Sophomore out of Pittsburgh, former wide receiver. Last year in this game, his best game as a receiver. Eight catches for 80 yards against Tech. You look at his right knee as we take time out early in quarter number three. You watch the right side of your screen. Watch Troy Davidson come in on late on this play. He's going to get his right ankle rolled up there. The pile just rolls up on him. Good news, though, that Troy Davidson hops up and gets off the field. Actually, he's on the sideline looking ready to come back in. And uh, Vander Linden said, no, just go sit down. Let the trainers take a look. At least get some tape on it. Georgia Tech pitches to Wiley. Lowers his head. Runs right over Sanders and continues on out of bounds near the 20-yard line. Yeah, Sanders might have gotten a little the worst end of that lick there. And he stuck his shoulder up there pretty good. Wiley just lowered his head and had the good body lean. And it looks like one of those stingers on the shoulder. Sanders for safety, Gary, not big at all. He's under 190 pounds. Yeah, but he's one of the most active guys on the field. He will stick, step up there and pop you. He's the third leading tackler on the team. And you watch big Wiley come around you. He does lower his shoulder, runs right into Sanders. And he has his helmet caught him right on that shoulder pad. Helmet to helmet collision and seen one uh, temporary KO already this afternoon and then Sanders trying to clear the cobwebs now. This has been a bruising game. Yeah, I think the helmet actually hit him right on the top of the shoulder pad and he's got that just a little stinger there and hopefully they can work that out and get him back in the ball game. You know, he's the leader back there at free safety and does a nice job for him. And they're pleased with him. All he's all over the field. The coaching staff said he's a, you know, he gets all over the field, and makes plays. ABC football next week in Georgia Tech. Well, Ron Vanderlyn is, you know, his history has been a defensive coach, and you know, every time the defense comes off the field, he's in the middle of that huddle, trying to inspire these guys to play good defense. Defensive coordinator at Northwestern for a long time, and you know, coming in here as an offensive. Well, actually, the head coach and having to do all the different little different things. He's trying to let his coaches coach on the field, but I think he's still got that defensive mentality and wants to be in there. Well, not surprising. You've got to be deep in your blood that, that far into your career. Troy Davidson sat out only one play, Gary, and he hit back even as Sanders passes him on his way to the sideline. Fake to Wiley, pitch for Rodgers. Cuts inside of Lindy Washington, and it will be first and goal for the Yellow Jackets at the eight-yard line, a 14-yard pickup for Charlie Rogers. Good job of execution by Hamilton there on the option play. Does a nice job of reading, pitching at the last second, and then the running back does a nice job of coming inside of Washington. They had listed him third behind Wiley and Phillip Rogers. We haven't really seen Phillip today. It's been... Wiley a tailback, and then Wiley move it up, playing fullback. And then let Rodgers take a turn to dot the eye. Right now, it's Wiley behind Ed Wilder at fullback, and Wiley going for three off right tackle. Where it'll be second in goal. We haven't talked a whole lot about that offensive line, but Craig Page, the center up there, and Brent Key and Jason Burks, the inside guys there, doing a nice job of opening holes for, this, for these running backs, and they're all doing a nice job. You know, the big tackle we talked about already beginning the telecast, John Carmen getting his first start at 6'8", 357 pounds. I think he's got a lot of potential, and 
he replaced Chris Brown as a starter, and they feel like Chris Brown has a lot of ability at right tackle. He may be left tackle as Ken Salaj moves on next year. Motion from Middleton. Hamilton with the call at the line and the catch at the line of scrimmage for the tight end Mike Lilly and he gets no further as Paul Jackson rides him down immediately. Yeah, Hamilton's checking off the line of scrimmage and actually as he's looking at the end zone, the whole clock is out there so he can't have the advantage of looking at his 25 second clock. So he's just kind of going on instinct and you know, he got the playoff effectively pr prior to the 25 second expiring. That scoreboard has been malfunctioned uh, all day. It's not at any point been working. And it was to Maryland's disadvantage in the first half, and now it is Joe Hamilton's problem. Yeah, you know, he can't he can't time things out the way he needs to as an offense, especially for checking off the line of scrimmage as he did this. Same thing here. Third and goal. Fires wide open. Harvey Middleton. Well, when you back up as a defensive player, and you know, you've got a wide receiver out there. You can't be lined up in the middle of the end zone trying to cover him. That's what happened with the cornerback there. Middleton, all he did was run up and take a little inside step. The cornerback had too much depth. You see the left side of the screen. I don't know if we'll be able to see it here, but Hamilton, just an easy inside reception. The cornerback is actually inside the, the end zone about five yards, and he has to be able to put himself between the ball and the receiver. Brakes adds the extra point. Six. Hamilton to Middleton. Touchdown connection all in the family this season for Georgia Tech. As he had Washington beat. And it's 31 to 10. Through high school and now through his entire career at Georgia Tech, Harvey Middleton has never failed to catch a pass in any game in which he's played. 61 straight going all the way back to high school and 39 straight here at Tech as he completes a nine-play, 81-yard scoring drive. Very efficient drive there by Georgia Tech on that possession. Helm does a nice job of moving the ball around and the coverage just led for that touchdown. Breaks. Back Sakala up all the way through the end zone. Very strong-legged kicker. As the Terps again setting up after the touchback from their 20. Maryland early led 7 to nothing, And uh, after a couple of punts, they got bit by the turnover bug, added a field goal late. And this after their opening scoring drive. And the last two ended with an interception and a missed field goal. But on their first drive, they look like they were ready to play uh, as wide open as you've ever seen them play, at least since they went from the run and shoot. They've gone conservative since, and Georgia Tech teeing off on a not very well protected Cummings as Shepard is there for the sack. But there's a marker down. Flag was thrown right where Shepard made the stop on Cummings. And they're going to get a dead ball personal foul for 15 against the Jackets. Let's go down to Christie. Lewis Sanders, who went out of the football game with his sore shoulder, and apparently his shoulder popped out. They popped it back in, but he is definitely out of the ball game. They're icing him down right now on the sidelines. Well, one by one, they are dropping for Maryland at, at the spot where they really can't afford it. They were... They were uh, very thin even to begin the season in their secondary. And the secondary under heavy fire all day. Jordan almost breaks that one. And as it is, he takes it 15. Jesse Tarplin finally able to hang on long enough to bring him down at the 45-yard line. Well, that's a bright spot here for this Maryland offense. Lamont Jordan, he just, he's just a bull. He's running the ball inside. He's got enough power. Good job there by the right guard. 71 Pat Ward making a hole for him. He stays on the block long enough, and Jordan does a nice job of running, getting his shoulder square, keeping his legs moving. Vanderlyn has got to be pleased with his performance today. 84 yards, I would guess so. 
Next carry will tie his own single season, single game freshman rushing record, but this is coming, showing his running ability, and he's finally captured by Rodgers. And again, they get 15 yards. Interesting, Brian Cummings is not necessarily a runner. I mean, in the run and shoot a year ago, probably didn't do too many option plays. Have a chance here now to run the ball down the field and take a little surprise that nobody tackled him or forced him to pitch, but shows enough speed to get around the corner. Yeah, when he got the nickname Flying Brian, that's not what they were talking about. <laughs> that's true. It was flying as in off the handle in his earlier days. Said, uh, I always got the impression my teammates kind of liked it when I lost it, but that has been discouraged by this new coaching staff, and he's complied with some very sober senior leadership. Jordan breaking tackles every time he pokes it, and that one goes nine. Ralph Hughes' turn to hang on for dear life. And you can really see exactly what Ron Vanderlinden saw when he said, here's the guy we build our building around. Well, watch the fullback as he comes out. That's Buddy Rogers. Buddy's the starting tailback before this game, but he does a nice job. Watch him get the guy off his feet. You'll see it right there on, on Brookings, which is a cause to play to go. And Jordan does a nice job running the ball. So Buddy Rogers, they've asked him to step out of the role as a starting tailback, move up the fullback, and uh, he's doing a nice job. The tandem of those two in there, kind of an effective one-two punch. Jordan. Gary number 23. That'll get the Terps another first and 10, 29 of Georgia Tech. Brooking and Bostic combining for the tackle. And you'd think that Buddy Rogers would be a senior tailback, have a chance to come back his senior season and, and run the ball effectively from that position. You know, he understood very early on that when Lamont Jordan came to camp that uh, this guy had some talent. And he's kind of made room for him. He's made room for him to get in the ball game, get in the flow of this offense. Uh, and he's unselfish to move up and pull back the block one as well. That just tells you the quality of the player that uh, Buddy was good. Buddy Rogers, uh, Jordan decided on football only after he uh, got undercut as a sophomore in high school in a basketball game. He decided he would keep healthier playing football. Not many have made that connection. This one is incomplete. Intended for Mike Hall, the tight end. Kofi Smith on a corner blitz was applying the pressure. Yeah, Cummings kind of does pay the price. Kofi Smith coming from that cat corner position that I called it earlier, coming open to the open side there, and Cummings kind of just delivers it just in time, and Kofi does, lays a lick on it. He's been impressive today, hasn't he, Kofi? Kofi's done a pretty good job back there, and uh, does a nice job. You know, at times, you know, his concentration is what is lacking, they think, here at Georgia Tech sometimes, but uh, he's played a pretty good ball game so far. First time today, the first man to make contact is all it takes to make the tackle. It was Ron Rogers in this case. Yeah, you get a big linebacker running up in the hole like Rogers, and uh, he's been wanting to lay a lick on Lamont Jordan like that all day, and he finally does. Good job of stepping up in the hole and wrapping up on Lamont Jordan. Boy, what it must be like at his house next week. His father, Ron, a Georgia defensive end, 67 to 70. And the Bulldogs will be here next week here on ABC. Third and ten. Smith coming again on the corner blitz. Picked up. Catch is made by Cruz. Who is driven out at the 26. And that will be well short of the first down by John Myers. And Cruz grabbing his left knee. They had twisted him on his way down. I hope that's not the case here. There's also a, a marker down thrown late way across the field. Well, it'll be to the near side of your screen here. Cummings is going to throw to Cruz. He's going to break back to the outside, and at the end of the play, he may put a little twist there on the tackle. His, his right leg gets, or his left leg gets caught up underneath him. It's just the pressure of the tackle. Well, it was illegal procedure, which, since they were seven yards short, they decline and they'll let Maryland snap it on fourth and seven but first of all they got to check on the condition of Moses Cruz <laughs> he and Jordan are bidding to uh, become the first receiving and rushing leaders as freshmen ever 
in Maryland football here. Dead by Midnight, an ABC world premiere movie tomorrow night. That's good news. Cruises up. Unfortunately, he's had, a, he's had an excellent season for a young guy coming in and leading the team in receptions. See what he's done today. Another one of the building blocks. Three more years. And while they were uh, tending to cruise, there was an offensive huddle over in front of the bench for coaches Johnson and Vanderlinden to decide how to go for it on fourth and seven. Well, they send Cheeseboro and Hatala wide right. Jordan, the lone setback. Crowd on their feet. Coming to throw on the run, and wide open is Buddy Rogers for the Maryland touchdown of 26 yards. Brian coming just bought a little extra time, got outside of the pocket, and Rogers just does a nice job of eluding and just finding an open space. And I tell you, that's just a senior heady quarterback there coming from finding the open receiver. Working right on his tail. Big block by Jordan to uh, make the pass Cummings to Rogers possible. And Maryland stays in the game. Fake field goal worked pretty well this time. Trey Evans will keep for the two-point conversion. Thirty-one, eighteen, seven twenty-one to go in the third. One more look at the touchdown. Well, Cummings is just going to take the ball. He's got pressure inside, so he's going to move out to the right. And Woods is, and Rodgers is just moving down the field to find an open area. Nobody covers him. Nice, easy throw by Cummings for the touchdown. You can see Rodgers here. He's just going to the outside. Turns up. He's just a smart, heady play by a senior receiver. And Cummings does a nice job of giving it to him. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by... Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Domino's, delivering a million smiles a day. And by Bud Light. If you want great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. 3118. On the two-point conversion by Trey Evans, who before the fake field goal in the first quarter had never thrown a pass, and before the keeper for two here had never run the ball. So you could make a case for the holder <laughs> as the MVP today for Maryland. Kopka pinning that one almost on the side as Des White, a prize freshman recruit from Orange Park, Florida, Reaches the 20, might have a face mask after a short return of nine yards. We also got a marker way back where the ball was kicked to begin with. That's where offsides is the call against Maryland. Also, there was face masking. Yeah, there was. One more look at the touchdown by Rogers. I'll tell you, senior to senior, Brian Cummings here going to roll out it. Buddy Rogers is just at the fullback position, lined up the line of scrimmage. Just a little out pattern, and Cummings just rolls to the outside, and, and Rogers smartly turns up to the end zone and does a nice job of receiving the football. Now, these two have played a lot of football together, and it's good to see them connect on a, at a game here at the end of their careers. problems with our referees Mike all day we do apologize that connection against North Carolina State was was the other way it was Cummings catching a 38-yard pass from Rogers who then scored on the next play first time for a Maryland quarterback to catch a pass since Stan Gelbaugh to Frank Reich a couple of familiar names from the NFL back in 84 so this Maryland coaching staff taking advantage of uh, their opportunity to work up 
some interesting wrinkles here late in the season. You know, we talked about earlier, they're kicking the ball over to Charlie Rogers. The reason they have him is because of Des White, number 22, the returner, he's got a 95 touchdown yard to return to his credit this season, and, and they know he's pretty explosive back there, so they've elected to kick away from him except for that last kick. That was last week, in fact, the 95-yarder against Duke. That's is this one backing up to the five. White driven out at the 33 by Todd Stewart. 26 yards on the return by White. Well, a milestone has fallen for Cummings, who has become the fifth Maryland quarterback ever to pass 4,000 career passing yards. Those are pretty good numbers for a young man, and it's got to be a got to be very proud of his accomplishments there. He's the fifth all-time passer in Maryland. Uh, had a good senior season and he's done the right thing for this program. Tell you what, the guys ahead of him on that list are some pretty prominent names themselves. Swing it out to Charlie Rogers for not much. Right back to the line of scrimmage. Well, still ahead of Brian Cummings. You got Scott Milanovic, Boomer Esiason. He gets a start tomorrow back for the Bengals. Neil O'Donnell and Dan Henning. <laughs> Coach Dan Henning. Yeah. Good, a good list there. Good company for Brian Cummings to be in, and uh, those guys are all great players above him. And uh, Brian Cummings has had a successful season in Maryland. No matter win loss, I think he's had a great career. He was no game. Second and ten. Hamilton has been dangerous all evening on the options in this one to the 39-yard line where Eric Obagu, the defensive end, makes the stop. Let's check in in New York with John Saunders. Couldn't help but think of Desmond Howard's return. The 91, the seal, the Heisman for him, also against Ohio State. Charles Wiley for the Tech first down. Do you think that uh, seals maybe a Heisman for Woodson today? <laughs> you could see, it. could say that possibly. Charles Wiley that does a nice job coming out of the backfield, crossing route in front of Joe Hamilton, tosses the ball out there effectively. Now I'm really impressed with Joe Hamilton. He is making the right decisions, not throwing the ball into coverage, finding the open guy, not trying to force the ball. And he's got receivers running wide open down the field and getting it to him. That's that's a mark of a talented quarterback. Well, hitting 64% of his passes coming in, that will uh, probably have him setting a single-season record. Georgia Tech's most accurate quarterback ever. Another strike for Harvey Middleton. Crosby had the coverage and makes the tackle at the 45. Just pitch and catch with Middleton and uh, Hamilton. We talked about them early in the telecast, you know, being cousins for a long time and throwing, playing balls from when they were little. A nice job for those two getting in there and making play after play after play for their careers here. Now, Stegall, since his second big uh, bomb catch, has been bottled up pretty well. He has not done any further damage. Hamilton, as you saw, still has only two incompletions all day. Wiley right through the middle. Got a block from Middleton and dragged down inside the 25 of Maryland. 21 yards. Credit the offensive line there, Craig Page. The center does a nice job, and, and Brent Key, the right guard, also gives Wiley a chance to just squirt right through the middle, and then he takes it almost to the house. As you watch here, watch Wiley. He's going to step straight up. The guard and center do a good job there. That's Page knocking the hole open there. Catches the linebacker. Ogle does a good job there for Wiley to, to turn his shoulders up the field. I tell you, when you're a running back and you've got holes like that to run through, it makes for easy work. Same thing, much different result. Only about three or four this time for Wiley. Big numbers today for Manning, Tennessee over Couch in Kentucky. Ralph Region sticking on the ground. Georgia sets up uh, next week's matchup with a victory over Ole Miss. Arkansas big upstate over Mississippi State in a uh, down year for the Razorbacks. ESPN tonight, Alabama, Auburn. Pittsburgh threatening to upset Virginia Tech. Stegall was heading upfield and Hamilton threw for an out. 
So there is incompletion number three with just over three and a half minutes to go in the third quarter. Well, Stegall's hitting himself on the chest saying, my bad, my bad on that one. I, think, I know that Hamilton's looking for the out. Stegall reads it as an up, and he goes up past the, the defender and uh, coming back to the huddle. And he's just talking to Hamilton saying, my fault, guy, my fault. He had seven consecutive completions before that one. And bringing up for the Jackets, a third and seven. Hamilton hanging it up from the shotgun. Leaping grab for the touchdown by Middleton. Middleton put down. Basically what you just call a flag pattern. Middleton takes off to the inside and turns out to the corner. Does a nice job jumping up for the football at the end line. Gets the touchdown. Hamilton to Middleton for their second consecutive touchdown connection. And since Maryland got the two last time they scored, Georgia Tech will try and get it right back. Middleton now seven catches, 104 yards, and the two scores, his ninth hundred yard reception game of his career. Hamilton going for the two to Stegall, and it is incomplete, almost intercepted by Davidson. That's kind of a dangerous pass he's throwing out there. Georgia Tech record those 900-yard games for Middleton. Here's the one that puts him over the top today. Hamilton nice and poised in the pocket. Does a good lot of time to throw. Throws the ball to the outside, only for Middleton to catch. Does a nice job coming down with the football. His foot is on the end line. Hamilton, yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> Just a daisy off. That's a key plunge, I think. <laughs> What an amazing zone he has been in. The two games before this one, he hit 77% for 631 yards, no interceptions, the best two-game stretch ever by a Tech quarterback, and he's better than that today. Yeah, I tell you, he, he's done a heck of a job throwing the ball around. But one thing that's happening with their, with their receivers is they're getting off the line to scrimmage very clean. You know, there's no obstruction with the defense trying to reroute those guys, and anytime a receiver with this, this kind of talent, Steve Gall or Middleton, have a chance to run down the field of the open areas they're gonna have a chance to make plays and a quarterback who is seeing the seeing the field entirely especially the last three ball games is going to get them to the open receiver well you had it right they're just playing pitch and catch that's they're it out there having fun throwing it around the lot and it's 37 points and counting for georgia tech with 337 still in the third quarter 19 point lead low kick by breaks and it's Hatala. Several returns, it looked like they were just one or two steps away from going a real long way. This one ends at the 30. Harvey's had a big night today. Seven receptions, 104 yards, and a couple of scores. You know, he's a leading receiver all time here at Georgia Tech. Over 2,100 yards, 18 touchdowns. Yeah, I think he's a very smooth receiver. Comes off the ball very well. And you know, it doesn't give a good indication to the defenders of which way he's going to go out of the break. Keeps his arms moving. Those are things that scouts look for when they watch a receiver, and I think that he, that he has some of the talent that may take him to the next level. Maryland all night coming back from pretty big deficits, and they've got another one to worry about. Three wide out, short drop, flag down, catch is made by Moses Cruz, who limped off last time we saw him with... Well, it looked like a sprained ankle. Still feeling that thing, too. Yeah, we got a penalty on the play. We're going to have an infraction by the offense. Not enough men on the line of scrimmage. Deshaun Simmons, 68, is uh, the injured defensive lineman for Tech. Junior out of Duluth, Georgia, former USA Today. First team high school All-America. Five-yard penalty. The team first down. Indication against Maryland. Didn't really see what happened to Deshaun. He was on the back side of the play. The winners, Watch the left side of your screen here. Buddy Rogers, the fullback's going to come out. Just kind of clip him here at the bottom. Catches him right on the knee. Just kind of submarines him. Good to see him get up off the field. Hey, 
That is uh, that's close to about a half dozen limp offs today. This, this we're going to finish this one a whole lot fewer players than we have to start this thing at 3:30. After the procedure, first and 15, Cummings, incomplete, intended for Doug Patterson. Well-timed coverage by Jason Bostic. Exactly right. The coverage is good. The timing was perfect. Comes in. You know, he could have made the tackle if need be. He steps up, knocks the ball away. It was a good job, good pace on the, on the coverage. You'll see Cummings here. He's just going to play action pass and throw it right out to the left. And Bostic does a nice job timing. Watch him come with his right hand around the, the, the receiver. His left hand is there to ensure the tackle. That's excellent coverage and just... Just how a defensive coach would like him to play it. We're real sure whether we see Jason today. He's been bothered by back spasms. But they've been without Jared Caldwell since the first half concussion. So they're better than normal in the secondary as well. Jordan driven out by Kofi Smith, who has really taken full advantage of the starting opportunity today. And so the guy who's really happy about the defensive performance is Dave Huxtable. They've done a good job here shutting this team down. You know, we talked about last week what happened with Duke, over 600 yards and a bunch of scores in the second half of that ball game last week. Huxtable's got to be pleased with how his defense has played, especially here in the second half. He's going to sleep a whole lot better. Well, he's going to sleep, period. <laughs> yeah, his wife might let him come home now, you know, get, get, get those pillows up off the floor in the office and come in and get some good rest. 610 yards by Duke, the second most ever allowed by Georgia Tech. And they've allowed an average of 533 over the last four. So they had some improvements to work on. Jordan crosses over the middle, all the way to the 46 for the Maryland first down. Good for 16 yards. Well, on ESPN tonight, 7.30 Eastern, for the Battle of the SEC, in Auburn for just the fourth time ever. The Iron Bowl, Alabama, and number 13, Auburn. That's followed at 10.30 Eastern by the uh, WAC matchup between number 22, Colorado State, and San Diego State. The Rams needing to win this game to win the WAC Pacific and take their berth opposite New Mexico in the WAC championship game. Lobos a blowout winner earlier today over Tulsa to get there from the Mountain Division. Wanted to go deep up the side, and again, he's got Buddy Rogers. That was actually the same play that they scored on a touchdown with, and Rogers, I mean, Cummings didn't have to roll out of the pocket. Buddy Rogers does a nice job. He's running with Keith Brookings, who's covering him, and just turns out to the flat and then turns it up. Called a little bit of a wheel route. Buddy Rogers does a nice job of getting down the field. He's, you know, he's the second leading receiver on the team coming in. You watch Rogers here. He comes up, and Brookings has him man to man. Cummings is going to get, he's got his man all the way. Nice job of throwing to the outside. Buddy Rogers does a nice job receiving the football. 20 yards worth to the 34. Now Jordan on the ground. Wrapped up by Felipe Lee Brooks. Short game. We go down to the two-minute mark remaining third quarter. I don't know that Huxtable feels all that comfortable yet because Duke last week did most of their second half damage in the fourth quarter when they hit four touchdown passes. They set seven offensive records. Well, I'm sure he's telling them that you cannot relax anytime. Cummings is a, you know, is a very capable quarterback. He'll find the open receiver. He can throw the ball down the field. Well, anything can happen here. Greg Johnson has his second and eight selection. Cummings down for the loss. The sack goes to Ralph Hughes, the Jackets' leader in sacks coming in now with five for the season the big big ralph's the senior and i tell you he's one of the specimens of a football player on the team four percent body fat they call him zeus does a nice job of containing the play here to the outside doesn't let cummings get outside of him nice terminator style tackle they call him the terminator yeah, no matter what zeus does uh, he adds weight and manages to lose fat in the process that's it he needs to sell that formula strongest defensive lineman ever in tex Long history. Third and long. Cummings underneath pattern for Patterson will only get him to the 32. And out at that point, knocked down by Tillman and Bostic. At the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has awarded over six and a half million dollars to the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. 
You know, Dave, I just wonder how Brian Cummings would have reacted in this type of an offense had he had a couple more seasons under his belt. He's learning as he's going along the season, as is the rest of the team. They've been playing that run-and-shoot offense, which is very different than this program. Uh, he seems to be handling it very well right now. This tells, shows you the, the talent that this young man has as a quarterback. Final play of the third quarter. Cummings has nowhere to go and has to do it by himself. Cuts it back, loses the ball, and it rolls out of bounds before Georgia Tech can get the recovery at the 22. And because of the fumble, he'll get the first down. Okay, that's a heck of an effort by Brian Cummings, just moving, trying to find something, make something happen. The pocket all closed down on him. Watch him here. He's just going to back up and look downfield. Nothing's going to happen to his right. Uh-oh, boop, got to go back to the left. Just moving, trying to find a way to get downfield. And the fumble, as you said, Dave, is going to cause him to get the fumble the first down. It goes forward. It was Tony Robinson who caused the fumble, and he is down hurt for Georgia Tech. Right at the spot where he knocked it away from Cummins. No first down. Looks like they're going to... Since it did not go back to a Maryland player, they will not allow the forward fumble on the fourth down. And so that is how the third quarter ends. It'll be Georgia Tech ball, ABC, with more college football after this message and a word from our ABC station. Ball on ABC Sports. Under the looming presence of Buzz, 37-18 Georgia Tech, we begin the fourth quarter. They do get it because of the rule uh, that you can blame on Kenny Stabler from several years back. Forward fumble, not recovered by the fumbler, so they don't get possession. And they'll start the quarter with Philip Rogers. And let's go down to Christy Deer. And we are on the Maryland sideline right now with uh, Ronaldo Nehemiah. And, of course, track fans and football fans remember this guy. Uh, you did not play college football at Maryland, but you did run track, and uh, you're here representing the school. Yes, I am. I'm trying to show my support. I'm, I serve on a volunteer committee, the uh, Terrifying Club Managing Board, where we try to uh, obviously get support from our fans to uh, raise scholarships for our student-athletes. So anything that I can do, and I'm honored to be a part of the travel uh, team here with uh, the University of Maryland. And, of course, you played football for the uh, San Francisco 49ers. You've got that world championship ring from, I believe it was 1984. Um, still love the sport. I was asking you, if you could have played football now, knowing what you know about it, would you play football in college? Well, in today's times, of course, timing is everything. I was born a little bit prematurely, but, uh, you know, I, I can't turn back the, uh, the hands of time. It's been a great experience, and I'm one of the very first uh, two-sport athletes. And you are going into the National Track Hall of Fame. That's got to be an honor. That's coming up in December. Yes, it is. Uh, you know, records are meant to be broken, but when your peers uh, induct you into the Hall of Fame, that's something that will be with you for the rest of your life. So I feel uh, satisfied that uh, all my accomplishments were not in vain. And you are the wizard in the financial world, I understand now. Well, I, it, it's great to educate and enlighten people with their finances to help them uh, enhance their, uh, their prosperity, and that's what I try to do. And uh, obviously you hang around Maryland and love uh, supporting the program. And uh, talk about the turnaround that you guys are going through here. Well, right now, you know, the confidence we have is that uh, uh, Debbie Yao has brought in a, a great, uh, experienced coaching staff, something that Maryland hasn't had in quite some time. So although we're, uh, you know, we're struggling here and there, it's a lot of inexperience, a lot of youth out there in the secondary, but uh, it's, it's going to turn around. Okay. You know? All right. Good luck, and okay. appreciate you stopping by. You. Back to you guys up in the booth. Hamilton, after the uh, quarterback sneak to keep the drive going, overthrows Mike Lilly, the tight end. Let's go to John in New York. Hey, back to you. One way to uh, mark how old the Rose Bowl really is is when you consider that Washington State hasn't been there in nearly 70 years. You can add up most of the bowls in existence. They don't total 70 years. Charlie Rogers, back at tailback. Did you ever uh, get a chance to, uh, to run down Skeets from behind in his brief football career? I don't know if I've ever run him down from behind. <laughs> really? We did play against him in, uh, when I was with the Giants in 84 and uh, tried to catch him once or twice. I don't know that I would ever catch just, him. Just hurt him going by. Uh, yeah. you know, just, just the win. Just the <laughs> win is all I know. Third and two. Hamilton. have run out of time, but because neither play clock is functioning today, 
They're having to keep it strictly on the field. Dead ball, false start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Well, that wasn't the problem this time, but we do have uh, Robin Woods' mic working. Yeah, you, know, you, you talk about Ronaldo Nehemiah coming in and playing football as a track star. Didn't play in college, played in the NFL. The coaches now, they actually go out and they recruit track athletes. And they try to find track athletes that can be football players because some track athletes can't can't relate to the football you know, pounding and time in and time out. But there are some guys out there, take a Derek Stegall, for instance. He has 4-2 speed. He is definitely a, a track star uh, in high school. And Lamont Georgia for Maryland, you know, he was the second in the 100 meters in the state in Maryland his senior year. So, you know, true speed like that is really an asset on the football field. Hamilton flush. First down keeper. Red White finally has Joe Hamilton, who's been a danger just about every way you can be at quarterback for Georgia Tech today. Well, we talk about speed, then we talk about elusiveness, and that's what Joe Hamilton has. He's got good speed. I tell you, he's more elusive than that. He gets, finds the open area. This is him like he's getting very far, but I tell you, he moves around very well and avoids tacklers. Does a nice job of getting the ball down the field. And carry Hamilton has 83 rushing yards to go with 17 of 21 for 265 passing yards. Play fake pressured hard, and uh, he will be spun around and down by Johnny Hicks, who gets his third sack of the season. Well, it may look like a bad play, but I think it's a smart play by Joe Hamilton. Hicks has him dead to rights, and instead of trying to throw the ball into coverage. You know, he takes the sack. Sometimes, as a quarterback, you have to make those decisions. When uh, does a coach not want to see one of his most <laughs> talented athletes? Well, Roddy Williams is one of the best punters in the country. He certainly eclipses the marks in the ACC this year. Hasn't been on the field today. The answer is, when he's your punter. You never <laughs> want to see him, but Roddy Williams has had... Terrific numbers, maybe all America numbers. Number yeah, he, six in the nation, that average, 46.6. We're watching him in warm-ups before the game and uh, the second half, started the second half, and Roddy Williams is easily nailing him 50, 60, even 70 yards in warm-ups. He's a heck, of a, a heck of a talent here for Georgia Tech. Well, the penalty indication is a face mask against the Terps, against uh, Hamilton, in fact, as he was being sacked. So he's shaken up. And uh, we'll see at least for one play. Brandon Shaw, his backup. Junior from Marietta. You might also have to, uh, to do some helmet repairs for Hamilton, we're told. But we got Shaw out there now. He was the starter on paper, at least, till the end of spring practice. And then Hamilton started to emerge. Not abated one bit. Charlie Rogers is inside the 40. First down. Davidson on the stop, and they're looking at the left eye of him. Yeah, when we talked to George O'Leary, he told us that the, the depth and the strength of his team was the running back position. And who have we seen today? We've seen Charlie Rogers. We've seen Philip Rogers. We've seen Charles Wiley back there. And I tell you, it's a, it's a good combination of backs. They run by committee. No one back is the leading back. And uh, actually, the, the leading back back there is Hamilton. As we take a look at him on the side there, trying to clean something out of his eye. Brandon Shaw, stronger arm than Hamilton and much bigger. Five inches and about 30 pounds on Joe. Fires that one out. It's a catch from Middleton. At the 34, tomorrow at 1 Eastern, 12 Central, and Pacific, the finals of the Chase Championships, the top 16 players in women's tennis in New York, battling for $3 million, and then at 4 Eastern, 3 Central, and Pacific. The final round of the ITT LPGA Tour Championship, featuring the top 30 money winners, including Monica Sorenstam. That's tomorrow on ABC Sports. Now, this is probably a good position here for... Uh Another quarterback to come into the ball game. Brandon Shaw hasn't played a whole lot this year. He started two games last year. Just need to get in and get a few snaps. You never know if something may happen against Georgia next week where he needs to get in and get some, get some time and just kind of get tripped up <laughs> onto the center there. Then what happened here? He did get the, the handoff off to Phillip Rogers. Well, I think he got stepped on by the center's left foot. We didn't see it in the frame there, but that's, that's quite common. And, uh, you know, Brandon's just a little, little rusty getting in there. 
Bradford Page is center. Brandon, the son of a coach, Bill Shaw, who was Reggie White's defensive line coach at Tennessee among some of his stops. Mike Lilly went in motion on third and a short two. Philip Rogers is spun down by Ogle. Good job of penetration by Ogle that time. Steps up in the hole. Philip Rogers right to Chesky short. The first down is going to be fourth and oh, a couple of yards, it looks like, Dave. And they're going to go for it. Field goal try would be about 48. So O'Leary sends Charlie Rogers back in there. Stegall right, Middleton left. And they go for it on fourth and two. Incomplete as Henry Baker was coming hard on a safety blitz and uh, got a hand on that pass from Shaw, intended for Charlie Rogers. And a good play there by Baker coming in in the backfield, tipping the ball. Otherwise, it's going to be complete to the outside to Rogers. Baker foils the fourth down with 9.16 to go at Georgia Tech. Tech still by 19, but Maryland holds, and they take over on the 31-yard line with 9 minutes and 16 seconds remaining. Joe Hamilton, as uh, he was being sacked by Johnny Hicks, poked in the left eye, and so Brandon Shaw finished up that possession, but had it batted away by Henry Baker. Superb evening by Hamilton. Don't know yet whether we'll uh, see him again, but we will look into it with Christie. Cummings is chased. We're going to have a couple of markers down as Cruz gets this catch, but it will come back. 13-yarder, but uh, you had two flags come down on what's got to be a hold. It's good to see Cruz back in the game after that hit his knee twisted going out of bounds, coming back for, the, for that reception. Holding on the offense, 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul, and receive first down. John Fugel, right of your picture, 66 for Maryland, the guy to watch here. And he's just gonna, <laughs> he's gonna pull him down with that tarpaulin. But who's coming on the outside? The square dance. And that was Hughes, he's trying to get the Terminator, trying to hold him inside, and Fugel just watch the jerk here, pulls him down. Yep. do si do and A big man like that, John, you're never gonna hide. from the spot, so first and 24. Quarterback draw for coming. Both quarterbacks have been significant weapons on the ground as well as through the air today. Claybrook's another stop. You know, I asked Ron Vanderlyn if he, if he would think of putting another player in, especially the quarterback position, to build on next season. And, you know, quite frankly, he said that he would rather just stay with uh, with Ryan Cummings. And he thinks he may give him the best chance to win. He really wants to win this ball game. And so even here into the fourth quarter, we've got eight minutes to go. He hasn't made a change in that position or really any of the, pos the positions out there that are key on this football team. He wants to give these guys you know, enough opportunity to play and win this game. Second and 15 play fake. And again, has to keep it. Lots more room this time as he's run down by Brookings. No, we haven't called Keith Brookings' name as often as we might have expected. 16 yards here for a guy that is their all-time leading tackler. Have they uh, done about as well as they can against him? Well, they're just moving the ball around a little bit. Keith Brookings does make plays, little subtle plays that you're not really seeing. Just, just staying in his area, controlling that area. What he did there in the open field, a lot of guys who can, who play linebacker, can't do what he did there. And in the middle of the field, make a good open field tackle on a, on a pretty elusive running back, or a quarterback in that case. Cummings almost gets the first down. Third down coming, and that much needed. You know, we talked about Keith Brookings a little bit. You know, he's one of those linebackers. He's 6'3", 240 pounds. Uh, actually, the NFL scouts really love a guy like this. He's got all kinds of speed, 4'5", and a 40. You know, he can play inside. He can play a little bit of outside. You know, a guy with that kind of speed, could even play a strong safety in the NFL. So uh, there's a high future for, for Keith Brookings in the NFL. Possibly next season. Well, he'd be a big, strong safety. 
He's still at 240 next year. Sliding for the first down. No option at all. The only option there was keep it, get the foot, and get down for Cummings. America's biggest road show rolling on next Saturday at 1 Eastern. Either number six Penn State hoping for an Alliance Bowl bid they in their regular year against Michigan State or from right here Bobby Dodd Stadium number 14 Georgia battling Georgia Tech and then at 430 Eastern 330 Central the Skins game Tiger Woods Tom Lehman Mark O'Meara and the defending champ Fred Couples all dressed from the Ryder Cup deep ball and should and do get a flag here as uh, it was Doug Patterson being grabbed rather obviously by Jason Boston. Yeah, that happens sometimes. Jason said, well, instead of letting him run by me, I'm going to do the smart thing and grab him. That's actually a good defensive penalty. It's kind of like in basketball. When a guy's got an easy layup for the score, you just hold him down, and that's what Jason did there. Yeah, that would be a breakaway foul <laughs> in basketball. Three flags, in fact. There's hardly an official who didn't call this one. Well, when you're out on an island like a cornerback is, and, and a lot of in view things happen, and uh, you know, if it's that obvious, you're going to get it called. Heavily forced at the spot of the foul. First down. Well, we'll take a look at Jason Bostig on the outside. See the receiver come down. I'm going to do a little out and go up. Oh, Jason said, "No, no, can't let you go here. Got to grab you. <laughs> Slow you down a little bit." Well, that's better than the alternative. You know your beat. They'll move it up to the 42 for the Turks. Almost half the fourth quarter still to go. Tech defense hoping to avoid a repeat of uh, last week's fourth quarter explosions by Duke. Shepard on the chase and down goes Cummings. That is 46. I tell you, that's good agility by, by a big man. Derek Shepard just comes through. Good change of direction. Cummings, I thought he was going to elude Derek Shepard, but no way. Big Derek, he runs a 4 7 40. He comes through, does a nice job of, of corralling Cummings. This is a 12 yard loss on Shepard's sack. Well, you see Shepard come in here. Good change of direction going back, and he finishes the play. That's what these coaches like to see a guy getting up the field and just chasing that ball until he goes down. Second and 22. Line the game to 32. Georgia Tech. Wide open area over the middle. Cruz battling the sore ankle. That'll get him within about 9 or 10. Moses Cruz from Germantown, Maryland. The only limps when he's not running a pattern. <laughs> yeah, it's hurting. He's coming back. He knows he's got to get on the field and do some things that Looks like he's going to get a little replacement, get a little rest on that leg. Out he goes, Keon Russell. Number four is his replacement. He comes inside to the right side. Atala also there, Patterson in motion. Freshman all, more markers fly. As Jordan, yet another freshman, makes the catch and another flag. Count of one, two, three, four <laughs> pieces of laundry at various sections of Grant Field. And I may have missed one or two. Well, I think the first thing we're going to have is defensive offsides at the top of the screen. When we get the replay, we may have it there. It steps inside. Then we're going to have offensive linemen downfield on a pass because the play was going to be a quick little screen play to the right, and uh, it just took too long to develop. That's all said and done. Offsetting. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Off sides on the defense, offensive pass interference, penalty counsel. Well, I guess that was fun for Robin Wood's crew because everybody got a chance to get into the act. I tell you, one, two, three, four, five, yes, six, they all threw them. Yeah, we, we had them down there. Yeah, they're handing back the laundry now, making sure everybody gets their uh, their flags back. Now, George O'Leary, it's, it's not really funny to him. He's not real pleased with, that, with penalties for his team. They've we talked about it earlier, they've been highly penalized here in the ACC this year, and that's the thing where a team, you know, can self-destruct, and he doesn't want, you know, create bad habits, and certainly uh, in the penalty area, that's something they can certainly improve on. Third and ten. Here comes 
come Brooking on a blitz, bearing down on Cummings and forces the early incompletion as Brian was running for dear life. Well, Keith Brookings comes right up the middle next to Ben Thomas, the center. Ben Thomas is just a freshman, and he's, he's, he's done a heck of a job this year for the Terrapins on an offensive line, making all the line calls. But when you've got a linebacker with the speed of, of Brookings coming up there, he actually leaned back a little bit before he snapped the ball, uh, just trying to get in position to, to make the block and, and couldn't get there, and Cummings has to throw it away. So on fourth and ten, Hatala wide to the left, Patterson coming wide right. Brooking once again, this time picked up by Buddy Rogers. Cummings doubles back. Buys time, runs out of room, lets it go, and it is incomplete. A floater intended for Doug Patterson at the 25. Well, Brian Cummings landed about six yards out of bounds on that play. He ran nearly 50 or 60 yards going back and forth across the field. 5.07 to go. Still Georgia Tech by 19. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By the Home Depot, America's home improvement coach. Dean Witter, there are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter, measure success one investor at a time. And Microsoft, where do you want to go today? Shaw, still the quarterback. Hamilton still has double vision. Don't expect to see him back. And the carry was by Philip Rogers. Let's go down to Christy Deer. And I tell you what, Georgia Tech needed one more victory to come away with a bowl invitation. It looks like they're going to get it today. This is uh, Bruce Keller from the uh, CarQuest Bowl down in Miami and Fort, uh, Fort Lauderdale. Do uh, you think Georgia Tech's going to have a chance to get down there? Well, I'll tell you something. Uh, we've had a Guinness Stout on ice for Coach O'Leary for three years, and I told him if he didn't do it this year, I'm going to drink it myself. I think they're going to qualify today. And any ideas to who they'll be playing? Well, first of all, they're on the short list. You know, we, uh, we still have to wait for... Uh, for the end of the season, for the Alliance Bowls to make their choices. Uh, but we definitely covet Georgia Tech. Uh, we think their opponent, uh, who comes from the Big East, will probably be either West Virginia or Virginia Tech. All right, thank you very much. And I know that's uh, something that uh, Georgia Tech fans have been waiting for. Head into a bowl game this year, back Fort upstairs. Lauderdale, Florida. One of the few bowls they've never been to. Kendall Ogle was shaken up for Maryland. We have timeout with 4.59 remaining. Back in Atlanta, Dave Barnett, Gary Reasons, and Christy D are 456 and counting Georgia Tech first down from the Maryland 47-yard line with a 37 to 18 lead. Shaw, another give for Philip Rogers, a sophomore out of East Point, Georgia. This all of last year, a pinched nerve, which caused him to uh, lose almost all of the strength on his left side at one point. He could barely bench press the bar, he said, before he started to work his way back to health. He was uh, George O'Leary's first recruiting visit when he took the head coaching job three years ago. And the head man glad to have him back and helping. Their third leading rusher this year got four yards there, second and six. Philip Rogers tries the right side. Lindy Washington coming up from corner. If time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty Carl Rebel postgame report featuring scores and highlights from across the country. George O'Leary taking a good opportunity to get some of the younger guys into the ball game, give them a little bit of experience. You know, up here 19 points late in the ball game. Along with Brandon Shaw, quarterback, got some new receivers and Philip Rogers who hadn't played a whole lot today. Markers again. This ball is picked up and a big return for Eric Barton inside the 20 yard line. Not quite as many flags as last time. I only count three. 
But uh, this recovery is going to stand. Well, we definitely dropped the football at the snap, and Ogle comes in and makes a good play. That's Barton actually comes up and makes the play. Vander Linden having it explained to him. Against the offense, that penalty is declined. It was a backward pass recovered by the defense. It cannot be advanced. First down. Yeah. You could tell right from the start of that play there was some confusion with uh, the two guys in motion. Well, they called this a backward pass. The center snaps it to the quarterback and it drops. And uh, I don't know if that's a backward pass or not. Picks the ball up. Actually, he didn't have his knee down when he did pick up the football. So that was really a, probably the proper call. Now they want 10 seconds reset on the clock. Upshot of it all is it is a Maryland's ball on the takeaway. But for Georgia Tech, just the price of getting as many young players as they can into the game. And this will be a, a major sigh of relief because they did not want to have Georgia coming in and still need that sixth win when the Bulldogs arrive next week. That's taken care of. Well, barring a miracle, Maryland will remain winless at Bobby Dodd Stadium. Tech 4-0 against the Terps here coming in, 6-3 in the first nine meetings. And only 2.57 remaining for George O'Leary to have the uh, bowl eligibility victory, the sixth of the season, in place. And we apparently have seen all of Brian Cummings. This is Ken Mastroli, a sophomore from Fort Lauderdale. His give will lose yardage on the carry by Harold Wesley. George O'Leary was on the sideline talking to his defense. Um, he does not want them to move the football here and have a letdown as he did against with Duke in the fourth quarter late in the game. And I think Vanderlyn is just content to let his guys get in there and run a few plays and run the clock out here a little bit. But uh, you know, overall, his program has taken a whole different look this year. Uh, they changed offensive styles, changed the whole staff there at uh, Maryland. Yeah, the future is going to be bright for him. When he when he came there, he changed all the little detail things even with that program as far as even the press guy. You know, the press book is uh, something that uh, the, the SID has a lot of influence over, but he even changed how that was laid out. Yeah, he wants to promote people for postseason awards before they've done anything a particular year. Tarplin on the sack. I think the other thing that Vander Linden has achieved this year is just learning all the non-football duties that go with being a head coach, handling the media, and he's got it coming from Baltimore and Washington and all the administrative duties that go along with that. He says uh, he thinks he's got that all figured out and hopes next year to be able to spend 80% of his time <laughs> on football. Good luck. Yeah, good luck. I mean, that's, that's, that's the job of a head coach now is to deal with all the peripheral things that are with that kind of a program. And, uh, you know, he's been a defensive coach all, the, all of his career, and now he's having to administrate everything in the program. It's just a little bit of getting used to for himself. And again, Mastroli can't get it off. And it's Clay Brooks this time getting the sack. Tarplin got him on the last play for his fifth of the year. That tied him with Hughes with a team lead. And now the redshirt freshman, Clay Brooks, getting into the act with a loss of 12 for fourth and 35. And on the punt will be Edwards. So I, we are going to go an entire game without seeing a single Rodney Williams punt for Georgia Tech. Well, he looks good in warm-ups. <laughs> oh, he <laughs> looks overpowering in warm-ups. And that's the only way we got to see him today. Seven sacks by the Yellow Jackets. More mark markers all over the field. Four of them, in fact. The return by Brett Basquin. After a 45-yard kick by Edwards. One of the four <laughs> being sorted out. Interesting there, Basquin. He's uh, back there returning the punt. He hasn't been doing that all day today. And by all rights, he should have fared up that ball. 
Only six men on the line of the scrimmage. The penalty has declined. Our Chevrolet most valuable players of the game. And we're going to go with the two quarterbacks, the senior Brian Cummings from Maryland and the sophomore Joe Hamilton from Georgia Tech. Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. Brian Cummings today finishing his career in style, 17 to 28, 202 yards. Hamilton, 17 of 21 for 265, three touchdowns and 10 carries for 83 yards, 348 total for George O'Leary's, the now damp George O'Leary's <laughs> sophomore quarterback, and they are celebrating being bowl bound on the Tech sideline. Well, they got him, George O'Leary's got to be proud of his team today and what they've accomplished this season. You know, this sixth win is going to qualify them for a bowl and possibly the Carquest Bowl, which we talked about earlier. It's a good win for this program. George O'Leary is a tremendous coach in his program, and you can't, you got to see about Ron Vanderland. He's got things going the right way for Maryland as well. I don't know why coaches always <laughs> they seem stand to be around. surprised by this. They stand around. I tell you, you know, they're, they're, they're game, you know. They tell, they tell players, you know, you got to keep moving. <laughs> we'll be back to Atlanta where Tech wins at 37 to 18. They are feeling good in the Georgia Tech's locker room right about now because for the first time in six years, they will head to postseason action. They have Georgia coming in next Saturday here on ABC, and they'll wait to find out just exactly where they're headed. Well, I can tell you, it won't be the All-American. No, no. Peach, maybe, but uh, they'll wait in anticipation, maybe headed to the car quest. Some other possibilities are also out there for the Yellow Jackets, but they are 6-4 and four as they now get ready for Georgia week. And they'll be tied for third in the ACC with Virginia, so good season for the Yellow Jackets. Once again, our final score, 37-18. Georgia Tech ends Maryland season at 2-9. Tomorrow at 1 Eastern, it's the finals of the Chase Championships featuring Mary Pierce and Yana Novotna, and then at 4 Eastern, the final round of the IPT LPGA Tour Championship. Win tickets to this season's Rose Bowl. Get online with ABC Sports College Football. Solve the word puzzles to enter on the keyword ABC Sports. For Gary Reasons and Christy Deer, I'm Dave Barnett. Good evening from Atlanta, Georgia.